Greetings all, this is your host N Commander, and hopefully my mic is working. So, it's been a bit since the last time we talked. It's uh, been over two weeks since the last research stream. I have been incredibly busy. I haven't even done any work with the PS2, which is sitting right here. So, um, if you haven't seen the previous parts, or, well, really, just the one part, but we've been basically doing this as a feed, uh, we are currently exploring OS2, and this is an ongoing series of research. I just realized the background music is really loud. I'm sorry. Come on, go softer. Okay, how's that looking? Alright, well, I'll just wait for that to chat, uh, to catch up. So, anyway, um, yep. Yeah, uh, I lowered it. The, uh, chat's on, uh, high latency mode just because I, it screws with subtitles if I turn it down, so there's that. So, um, I've done a lot of research since the last stream. Um, if you haven't seen it... On the wiki, and I will find it, um, last time we did an in-depth OS2 1.0 exploration stream, uh, which became a 5,000 word document. Uh, yeah, so there was a lot to say on that. So, uh, no, I'm, I've got an incense stick going. It's just smoking much more than it usually does. So, um, yeah. As you can see, got nothing in my hands. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's one of those things I just picked up at one point. You know, when you travel a lot, you pick up the weirdest habits. So, before I get into I do have a little a few life things. So, for those who may or may not know, I've just been extremely busy for the last two weeks. I also had someone that... Um, one of the people that helped me a lot in life passed away recently. Uh, I suspect it happened over the summer, um, but I just got official confirmation about it. I will talk about it at some point because this is something I want to memorialize, you know. I'm sorry, uh, that one got to me a little bit. Um, yeah, I got the new... Uh, the person who passed away was one of my doctors, someone who's stuck through me for a long time. Um, and he lost his bowel of cancer. He had, I know him probably about five years when all was said and done. I actually, my last message to him was when I was touring this summer, I, uh, I sent him a postcard. I do hope he got it before he passed away. Uh, yeah, I can increase my microphone volume. So... Yeah, so that's the current state. My microphone volume is actually maxed out. Uh, I can turn it up at the interface box. There we go. So, yeah, so that's kind of where I've been, and I've just had a lot of other major things going on. So, the ba so between streams, let me switch to 86 box full screen. Um, I... Like I said, I've done a lot of research. So right now, we just have a fresh VM. I Let's reboot off the hard drive. It's a still the NCR-286, because at this point, the IBM PS2 still needs a lot more work before we're going to be able to run OS2 on it. We made a lot of good progress on it last time, but uh, it's going to be in just a constant bit of pain. Um... The app that shows the weather in the taskbar, isn't that built into Windows 11? Okay. If it's not, uh, you know what? Let me write the timestamps down. Um, I've been using pen and paper a lot, but this is something that actually works better. So, stream start, uh, 0530, starting with OS2. Though, yeah, this memory test takes such a long time yeah. so on the first stream we looked at IBM and Microsoft OS 2 1.0 which were graphical uh, did not have graphical user interfaces the first one that had the graphical user interface which was known as presentation manager was IBM OS 2 1.1 and um, 
1.1 is very interesting because it's very much unlike what was before or after. So I just made a clean VM, uh, just have IBM DOS 3.3. You can theoretically install OS2 without that, but I've had problems with it in practice. Uh, are we going to look at Standard Edition or Extended Edition? You know, let's start with Standard Edition if it will install. Um, because that is what end users would have experienced. I know I've got something different on the wiki page. But I've been kind of been tinkering with this for the last two weeks. Okay. So there's that. Yeah. No, Sorensen... Sorensen did help me a lot. Um... It wasn't unexpected, but it still hurts. And what I will probably end up doing is I still need time to process that. Like, life has to go on. But I will probably hold an in-memoriam stream for him, just talking about him at some point. I will probably do that, actually, on Day of the Dead in May. That's three months from now. Um... And it seems fitting. Because at that point, I will have no all the full details. Um, so, the difference between Standard and Extended Edition is... Standard Edition is what you would have gone from a store. Or, well, realistically, a manufacturer. Extended Edition was only available to IBM partners. And I wouldn't normally even show it. Except for the fact it didn't boot off it. What happened? Oh, well, that's what happened. Um, those are five and a quarter desks. Uh, I guess we are going over the IBM one because I really don't want to reconfigure this VB VM. It's fine. It doesn't make that big of a difference. And it gives us some additional applications to look at. Like, I'm not going to dive into the IBM server package that was something um that's something for a later stream um but like because there was an entire os2 server editions there was the ibm extended which had sql server communication manager and starting with this version land requester um the microsoft ones which came later had what would become microsoft sql server the first iteration of land manager domains and a few other odds and ends. The IBM ones are a little bit more interesting to me at this time point of time because the Microsoft ones did not become prominent until later and they weren't a separate edition of the operating system. Like the actual branding of the operating system changes with IBM standard to IBM extended. Assuming it ever boots up, this I, I'm going to have to patch out the memory check in the BIOS. Like that is something I am really, I really just have to do, because that is just annoying at this point. Okay, so this should tell me it's uh, ready to install. Okay, I have found Windows 11. It's not bad. It's not good. It's a lot like Windows 10 with uglier branding i find yeah so here is part of what i was talking about how it says ibm os2 extended edition right there like it is from what we've determined on discord um ibm os2 was likely built on top of multi-user daws 4 which means that this was likely all branding components that go back to daws 3 and daws 2 days like there was probably an OS2 OEM adaptation kit of some sort, uh, which vendors would have gone from Microsoft and then modified for their hardware. Now, it is entirely possible that is what IBM did. Like, Microsoft made the base oak, then IBM modified it, and then the IBM modifications got pulled in because the Microsoft version of 1.1 has a lot of changes that were in, only in the IBM 1.2. So, okay, yeah, there we go. IBM OS2 Extended Edition 1.1. 1 
Uh, and this came out November 1988. Um, let me just mark the stream start. So we started at 11 minutes. We actually managed to start. Okay, cool. There we go. All right. So, interestingly, this installer does not look like it's rebranded. Like, it just said it had four disks. Do not format the partition, please. Uh, yeah, you can rename. I don't believe that this version will give me the option to dual boot like Microsoft 1.1 1 or uh, 1.0 does. In fact, I believe that was also removed in Microsoft uh, other one. Yeah, I know of Arcadia OS. I talked with this was many many years ago, but I just sent. I think it was Ecom Station. I don't think it was Arcadia. I sent them an email wondering if they were looking for system engineers at one point. Um. From my understanding, Arcadia and um, Arcadia and uh, Ecom Station before it, I don't think they have the source code to OS two, or if they do, they just have the kernel. They don't have all of it um, because they've made some pretty significant changes, but they've also been a, a lot of things they haven't been able to do. So. Um, who knows? Yeah, essentially, the extended edition alley is the server edition SKU. Um, it's why I want to get it running on real hardware if I can. The PS2 is going to be a while. Um, the alpha system, assuming it survives shipping, I haven't checked yet. I will likely do that on stream. I mostly grabbed it because it was $200 for an alpha. I have been trying to get alpha hardware for over a year at this point, and I really didn't want to go with build it yourself, but I was getting a little desperate. So I just snagged it when I saw it was 200 on eBay with free shipping. I'll pick up an ATX case in the next month or so, and then we'll probably do a stream putting it together. I have to take it apart. I have to smoke test it. Like, I don't want to just try and put it together live. Like, I'm in the process of rearranging and reorganizing my living room you can't see it because of the camera angle but i now have two additional tables from what i had i'm going to put up i think i'm going to put up an alaska and a new york state flag as well as a new jersey because i'm from new york alaska is by far the favorite place i've lived in and i currently live in new jersey and i might add other flags for the states that i've lived in because although oregon has a really ugly flag like I don't really know if I want the flag of Oregon on my walls. I'd also have to add Texas, Florida, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Um, why do I feel like I'm missing a state? I legitimately feel like I'm missing a state. I know I've lived in more. Maybe not. Maybe that's all. So there's that. Yeah, it's an incense stick. It's just smoking real good. But, um, there is nothing on fire today. Yep. Let's see here. All right, disc one. Yeah, I just haven't decided how I'm going to decorate it. I, you know, I've been here, like, apartment decoration is entirely a new thing to me. I mean, I lived out of a backpack for so long that... Having walls I can put things on is like a completely new novel experience. Yep. Yep. Uh, is the U is the Utah flag really not a? Did they hold on? I don't. I didn't know that one. Huh? Utah Utah state flag. I didn't realize that the Utah flag was not. Um, was not a rectangle. Okay. Well, today I learned. Okay. I find Windows 11 is better than Linux on my current machine. And, you know, I'm going to put this thing out. As much as I like having it, you know, what, what I will just do is I'm going to move this to the other table because this is this is starting to smoke up something pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll just put this right here. There we go. 
All right, now it's to my right. All right, uh, yep, nope, still copying that diskette. I'm actually curious on how much disk space this actually is, because I have used Presentation Manager on mostly correct, period correct hardware, and I was incredibly unimpressed. I've never, I've run it, like, I actually would go as far to say as I do believe Presentation Manager was one of the main reasons why OS2 failed. So, like, this is impressively slow, though. Like, really impressively slow. Um, at some point, I'll be done copying. I don't think this is an emulation thing. Like, the biggest problem with Presentation Manager is that applications all have to work in, like, a, a shared bubble. There's what's known as the single input queue. So a single crashed OS uh, presentation manager can in fact crash the whole thing. It's just not a good environment. And that was something Microsoft, uh, uh, sorry, IBM never fixed. Warp 4.52 released in 2001 has a partial workaround. So like, it's interesting. Like, there's a lot of people I know who think Workspace Shell. That's the OS2 2.x um, 2.x UI. We, ha we haven't looked at that one yet. That probably will be the last one in the series. Because I'm expecting this to do three or four streams. This is the second one. The first one was the fundamental groundwork. What was the first version of OS2? This is looking at Presentation Manager. And... The next one, and this may be a two-part stream. I don't know if I'm going to cover everything in a single go. I have it ran out as a two-part stream where we're going to look at Presentation Manager. And then um, <clears throat> and then upgrade it. but Or not upgrade it. Um, and then compare it. But I don't think we're going to do both today. I, I will be surprised if we do. And then... We will then look at the 32-bit version. Uh, we'll probably look at OS2 2.0 and 2.1. And I think at that point, I will wrap it up into a video and summarize my findings to date. Because right after, um, right after uh, this, I'm probably going to use this next week writing up all my notes. Because I need to... This is going to be a project that we're going to be working on for months i suspect because there's a lot of things i want to cover so having a good cross reference of information will help a lot um and pvc os2 does have proper multitasking it supports both processes and threads and has some provisions for dealing with a hung process you can't easily kill a process on os2 but um it shouldn't crash the entire system Presentation manager applications, however, all share the single input queue. Um, whether the single input queue actually does help. Um, no, Tom Rundberg, that's that's actually incorrect. Um, the 1.x had a single DAW session, but the processor was reset into real mode for it. It doesn't use virtual 8088 mode, at least in the IBM versions. Uh, presentation manager applications are multitask, but they all share one input queue. So a crashed PM application can crash the entire system. Or it can, well, it can hang presentation manager, which has effect the same thing. Without presentation manager installed, you can preemptively multitask. Um, 2.0 required a 386 and could multitask, uh, both DAWs and Windows 3.0, 3.1. Uh, well, Windows OS 2 is what it was called. Uh, OS 2, 2.0 had Windows 3.0 and um, OS 2, uh, 2.1 had Windows 3.1. Um, the last remnants of the Microsoft IBM divorce. OS2 did uh, OS2 supported 16-bit DAWs applications. Um, 
interestingly enough, the console API was never updated to 32-bit, even except on the, the PowerPC port. Uh, something that the hardware for that PowerPC port is unobtainium. Yeah. Um, if Presentation Manager was qua was properly preemptively multitasked, it would have been equivalent of Windows NT of the same era. Um, so, um, content, um, I'm legitimately, I have questions about that. The 286 has been blamed for the OS2 failure more than once. I'm not convinced that it's true. That's why I've got the IBM PS2 behind me for the actual uh, 286. I still have to do a lot of work to get that machine going. Well, I have the machine going. I, to get it to run OS2, I have to, I have to make some modifications to it because I will never find the proprietary IBM Sims that it needs. Apparently, I put the wrong disk in the drive. Yeah, so that was one of the big things is that OS2 by design was meant to be a, a always meant to be a single user operating system. It was NT was always intended as a multi-user operating system to some extent, although the the betas from this era are actually quite fascinating. And you know, what, I'm going to move the camera just so I can talk a little easier. Um, since right now we're just killing time while we are watching the disc go by. So, the NT betas and the early, especially the 1991 alpha, which cropped up, I think, a year ago, is a fascinating look of the very tail end of NT OS 2. So, um, it's... Like I said, I have mixed... The problem is that there was so little software for OS 2 for this time period. There was more in the 90s, but that's beyond the 16-bit era. Because my current hypothesis, and we may or may not find out this is right, is the reason that OS 2 failed was set in the 16-bit era and why Microsoft ultimately walked away in 90 and 91. But before I want to tackle that, I want to make sure I actually understand the 16-bit era of OS 2 very well, because there's very little written documentation on it. Um, a lot of the first-hand sources I have checked are actually factually wrong. The Wikipedia page is hilariously not accurate to the state of reality. So... So, MJDXP, single-user operating systems, though, were, th were the norm for microcomputers that did not change until the 2000s literally until windows xp was when that became the norm no it's still copying i can see the progress bar it's just going very slowly okay we don't have a driver support disk we're going to accept the defaults uh we've got a serial mouse not as support accept and complete installation I've never seen it on ATM firsthand. I do know that the New York City MetroCard system runs on an OS2 based system. They are replacing that with Omni at this point, but the New York City Transit Authority is, or well, Metropolitan Transit Authority, if I'm going to be accurate, is one of the few still active users of OS2 in this day and age. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, the biggest problem with OS 2 in the 32-bit era, which was when I actually used it. This was before I did. This was before my time, actually. I was six months old when this product came out. Uh, yeah, no, I would have been six months pretty much exactly when this product came out. Um, wow, that's my brain just completely... Locking up. Um, Shoalfox, I ha I have heard mixed results if they moved it over to NT or not. It could be running in the OS2 compatibility mode, but I know it was on OS2 at uh, such point. 
Uh, Darren, when your OS doesn't do much, it's pretty easy to keep secure. Okay. Let's see here. All right. So are we actually booting? We are actually booting. Cool. There we go. All right. Presentation manager. Okay. So let's make a note of this in the timestamp log. So 2609. Oh, yeah. All right. So, okay, cool. We do have a working mouse. It's a little jittery. I'm going to hope that's, I think that's an emulation problem. So this is presentation manager and uh, there's not a lot to look at. So one of the big problems of OS 2, especially early OS 2, is there is no drivers. Like, in theory, Presentation Manager can go, has no resolution problems, but they only support the rare IBM extended, uh, extended support stuff. Like, here's File Manager. Like, this is, like, you know what this has always reminded me of? This reminds me of DAW Shell. Like, this reminds me exactly of what a graphical DAW shell would look like. And I, I'm almost, I wouldn't be surprised if they are actually the same program because they, look how similar these things are. By and large, it wouldn't be that difficult. Like, if we go down here and um, there are a couple of, I think it's here in the intro folder. Maybe not. So your intro. It's possible they're not in. It's possible they're not in extended edition. There is a handful of demo apps that should be here. Maybe they're here in the top level one. We do have E. Oh, E is a command line application in this version, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so you can run, so most apps in OS 2, let's see here, can I tab out? Uh, I need you to lock the keyboard. Okay, keyboard requires capture. That doesn't help. Um, this might be a problem. Wait, hold on. Ah, okay, control exit. Uh, pops up to the task manager. And then what I can do is I can arrange. I think I can tell it to cascade. Yeah, I can tell it to cascade various windows. Look how slow that is. And you can see that I've got an OS2 console application running. Can I restore this? Yeah, you do get restored, but you don't stay like... All right, if I want, let's see here. The mouse is running very slow. All right. Uh, let me close E. So the other way you can do it is if we close Task Manager. Or I guess doing that just closes the application, so I can just exit. Notice that it's using F3 for exit. It's not actually uh, Alt F4 yet. You know, like that literally has not been standardized in this era. Let's see here. Yeah, hold on. I gotta do something about this mouse sensitivity. Like, what is going on here? Can I. Is there something in 86 box I can adjust? Yeah, I don't think I can. I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is, this is all pre common. Uh, common user interface guidelines. You know, hold on. My mouse has a precise mode. If I turn that on, is that better or worse? That's not great. Um, let me try changing my system 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 settings. Pointer. Let's see how pointer. Wow, that's slow. Okay, that is much better. That is in fact much better. Like, I can actually move it. I still have to use very precise movements. Yeah. 
I don't know if that's an emulation problem or if that is a... Like, I don't know how to deal with that. Like, so this, yeah, it's like, this was definitely released. Um, okay, so I guess Alt F4 is used there, but this one you also uses F3. And if I hit F3, yeah, it closes the file system. Okay. So the other way you can run applications is you can have them windowed. Like you can do this and then you can do E. Oh, interesting. It actually, it actually will not let me run that. It can only run as a full screen app. Oh, that, that is wild. Why is that? I didn't, that is definitely, yeah, it's, I've heard that it's bad, but I didn't realize it was that bad. Like, I have run this before, but it's been a while. So how do I get out of this? Is it control exit? Okay, so F3 takes me out of that. Okay. Like, it is possible, like, for this period of time, you're still dealing with, um, like, if I, like, presentation, word for presentation manager didn't exist yet. So, if we install, oh, I don't know, word, because that's something we did last time, uh, and I do actually have it right here. This is word 5.5. This is, this version's been on a lot of things. So, if we run setup from here. And it is going. Like, yeah, I mean, that is multitasking. Okay. So if we want to run Word, we're going to set up to hard drive, install a new version. We are AT. Uh, we're technically VGA, but we're going to say we're EGA here. Don't install any of this because we just don't care. All right. So now that while this is copying, let's pop that to a window. We, wow, you can, you can look how much it's lagging. But we can open file system and it is paging out. I can actually see it. The hard drive's crashing from this. Uh, PIFs do exist on OS2, but... Or at least I believe they do. Let's open. Yeah, see, now you can already. We can see that it's already copied files. Now we can switch back here. It wants program disk one. And now while that's going, I'm hitting refresh. And now you can see there's more files being done. So yeah, look, multitasking. I can also choose to go, I believe I can tell it to go, ooh, small font. If you really want to make it tiny. But now you could run another application right there. Um, no, PIFs existed in multi-user DAWs 4. It's the earliest known version of them. They also exist in Microsoft uh, Windows 1.0, although it's not clear which one of those two things came first. So PIFs were... Um, were definitely uh, predate this by quite a lot. Oh, um, you know, it does remind me because um, uh, Mikkel, uh, how do you say his name? I no, no, it's Michael, the guy who runs OS2 Museum. He had to patch the e not e. He patched uh, the Microsoft editor MEP to uh so it could run in a window but it's interesting that you even have to do that like i would think that you could detect that through programming apis uh extend a extended no pifs uh, extended attributes really did not get used until 
I don't I don't want to put a firm line on 1.3, but that was probably the earliest they realistically were used. But it really was 2.0 when H HPFS was much more expected than not. Like fat support was always there, but it was never good. But fat support hadn't been added yet. And I just noticed that this has MSD, Microsoft Diagnostics, on it, which I guess I want to run because I want to check something. I mean, if you really want to see ancient UIs in Windows 11, um, go to the Add Fonts dialog box. That's unchanged, I think, from Windows 3.0. Right, I'm going to step away from keyboard for a moment. Just give me a moment. So I'll be right back. And I am back. Just had to crack open the window. All right. So let's see. Here. Let's let update system files. Uh, did it freeze? No. Oh, there it goes. I guess I just registered the click. All right. Yeah. So it's still copying files. Yeah, I need to grab a copy of Top Box, uh, top, oh, top Box, Top View. One of, at some point, I'm going to do a stream where we're going to look at Desk View, Top View, and Windows 1.0. I'll probably get the Compact Portable out. We'll do that one on real hardware, because that one's actually pretty easy to do on real hardware. I just have to actually do it, because I have the I have the Portable. The Portable is all set to go. All of that will run on an 8088, and it's always cool doing multi uh multitasking on 8088 because really the problem wasn't the 8088 it was DOS wasn't designed for it that's why you really need the 386 so okay so word is still installing and this is an os2 native app like the only third-party application i know from this era because word doesn't count it came from microsoft that would be Borland's sidekick. There may have been one or two other ones, but they were very few and far between. Okay. So what else did I have on my, what do we want to cover today? Yeah, so let's, so now we've got Word installed. And this is the, I this version of Word may be a little bit too new. But Presentation Manager Word would not come out, would, does not work on 1.1. I actually did try it. Um, it does not run on 1.1. So this is the closest thing we have to a correct version. There we go. Cannot read disk. Why are you having problems? It's always annoying, it's amazing when you somehow manage to get a floppy failure in an emulator. Okay. I'm really not that concerned about chat G GPT. At this point, you can really get drag and drop applications that do really complex tasks. So compared to some of the other ones, so let's, uh, so Word made some changes to the system. So let's uh, let's do a reboot, and then maybe after 
uh, after the reboot. Uh, let's do the introducing OS2 thing. Like, let's, let's just figure out what we are doing here. So, uh, how do we re restart? I think I have to open the task manager. And then from here, I can shut down now. Yes. Okay, and then... Um... Yeah, what I find interesting is that this task, this file manager is pretty much exactly what it is. Okay, so turn off your computer when all disk activity is stopped. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So now I just hit all control delete and it should just reboot. Cool. Like, I'm not that worried about it. Like, there's been fears of automation replacing man for generations. And it's not the sort of thing I'm going to lose sleep over just yet. So there's that. Uh, DAWs 1.0 and parts of 2.0 are open source now. They were, oh, it was open sourced by the Computer History Museum, but the release was messy and it's, and instead of just releasing the discs, like, I don't know why they didn't do this. It's like, it boggles, whenever the computer, like, I don't know why the Computer History Museum releases software in the way it does. It drives me completely crazy. It always has, like, the most you know, worst restrictions known to man on it. And maybe that was the best they could get from the vendors, but I have my doubts. But they don't even release the original disk images. They just release collections of files that are often mismarked. Like, the DAWs 2.0 source code is extremely messy. There were... The word 1.1 was okay, but it's under the restrict. It's under the research license, which makes it almost impossible to use for any real world use. Like, I did a video on it. I was pushing. You know, I was at the limit of what you can do with that bloody license. It's just one of those things that gets me quite annoyed. Yeah. So, Presentation Manager was directly based off Windows 2.0, but it has API differences. I don't want to break out the programming tools for this one. Like. There's enough there that when I break out the programming tools, it's going to be complex. I do want to look at this introducing OS2. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. Is it really a full screen app? It is, apparently. Oh. Oh, okay. This is introducing the extended edition. I wonder if the standard edition doesn't have this. Like, if the standard edition has a graphical one? No! Okay, so apparently when you hit that... Because I hit that first introducing OS2 and then it kicked me out here. Oh. Well, this is, look at that. This is fancy. Introducing the base operating system. Click topics on the top left of the screen and click the topic you want to see. So, introduction. Like, this would have been basically most users' first experience with a GUI. Unless they were using, they had used Apple. This might have been the first time they would have seen a graphical user interface. It was not a standard feature in this era. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 3D Movie Maker would have been good, and hopefully we'll see more of that. So, this program is a simulation of Operating System 2 and shows you how to use the main features and functions. The topics may be used in any order. When you, uh, when you complete this program, you'll know how to move and size windows and A. A. I'm gonna write that one down. And IBM, I, and IBM teaches you how to use how to a. All 
I, I'm gonna have to check to see if that's in other editions. Like, how did that one slip by? So, okay, so scrolling page by page, you can use F7 to scroll backwards and F8 to scroll down. So, F8. Like, why is that useful? Like, you have page down, page up, and that works. The Space Saver keyboards had page up, page down. Okay, so... Icons are pictorial, pictorial representations of a selection of choice or action. For example, the DAWs icon represents the DAWs command prompt. Drive out a uh, particular drive, an hourglass, blah, 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 blah. This would be basically simple for anyone. Yeah, so more panels. Like, you know what this reminds me of? Hold on, let me let me bring this back up. Let's go to, window, go to the windows. You know what this view reminds me of? This reminds me of... Um, green screen terminals how you have the function keys right here um so here start programs so i'm gonna actually note that so uh tutorial program operates like ibm 320 with function keys being defined on screen Um, yeah, I I know exactly that pain. So let's take a look here. Title bar, system menu, action bar. The action bar is the second line containing... It's not... Look, it's not called menu bar. It's called the action bar. Now, is that an IBM-ism or is that a Microsoft-ism? Like, menu is called action bar? That is bizarre. Like, I knew one of the big difference between Microsoft and um, uh, Microsoft and IBM OS two was terminology, but you know, like the documentation. But that is different. Um, move the windows to the other to other sides of the screen. That's fine. Change the size. Change the length and width. Let's see here. Maximize. You can use the restore icon. You can minimize. Let's see here. Double click on the program or click on the start programs icon. Okay, so that would be, yeah, start programs. Many windows on time, uh, when, okay. So there's not a whole lot different here, but you know, like this reminds me of like more of a graphics library for showing how you do applications or not. Um, so if you have several, if you have several games programs, you could add a group called games to the start programs window, and then uh, the titles of your programs to the games group. So you could add a group like that, new group name, so it's actually going to make me do this. So add group program add. So type tick tac toe games tick tac dot exe games. Make sure to spell C games tic tac. Oh, surprise! It's and then you can double click it here, and then it loads a tic tac toe game. And it'll just keep running over and over. So if you want to switch back to the main group, so this is like this was not something in Windows 2.0. This did not exist. Base operating system. Uh, so I guess let's learn about the file system. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is not a bad tutorial program. 
Files in the file system are organized into directories, making files easier to find. Uh, so let's open up the XYZ directory. So these are all text files. Create a new subdirectory called sales. Sales. Click on HAL3. Move. Like, this is definitely an improvement over, over DAWs. So, so presentation manager is an improvement in usability over command line, but it's very slow. And just remember, I have two megabytes of memory in this system. That is a lot of memory for this time period. Like most, in this time period, you would not even expect to have full conventional memory standard yet. Like. You, that that would no maybe by this point 640 would have been standard but okay so we can move files we can change attributes so attributes change attributes um archive read only hidden file system yeah so these are all the fat file system stuff so yeah, we can change that. You can associate a program with an editor with a file extension such as .txt. Now, I'm not sure you can do this in Windows 2.0. So we click on report. We want to associate. We want to add a program to associate it with. Okay, so whenever you double click this, it doesn't seem to do anything, but I don't have an editor program. Okay, so you can sort files, display options. Let's, uh, let's go for full file details. It's ascending directory. Right. I'm just gonna let it run through this. So various options that you can set. Close that directory and then you can exit this like that and then i think that's the end of that tutorial which just leaves what is that the end of it ah task manager task manager lists all currently running programs and lets you switch to a running program and close a running program and shut down all programs double click the task manager at the bottom of the screen okay all programs listed are here. So we can see here we have the DAWs penalty box. We have the program launchers, the print, the printer spool matcher. This is a big one that I can't show properly. OS2, you could print a document out and then do something else. And printing in these days could easily take 10 to 20 minutes if it was a complex document. So, definitely. Yep, um... So it's definitely going the right way. So we can pull up tic-tac-toe here, and then we can close it from here. Then we can minimize this, and that ends that. So I think that covers basically all there is to know about this. Now, we'll come back to these three points, because land requester and land server we didn't see last time and we probably need to bump the amount of memory in the vm if we're going to install these two i haven't decided if we're going to do that today but we'll come back to it i do want to look at sidekick though uh and let me look at let's look at our list of applications that we are covering today So yeah, we are actually going to install the full extended edition apps, but let's I want to pull up something first. So let's let's do exactly what it says we should do. Let's add a new program for Word. So if we do that and we push enter here.
And now we get, uh, we get Word. And this is Word for OS2 running in, uh, running under Presentation Manager. And then we can collapse that. Notice it doesn't resize because it is still a console application. Open file system. Like, when Microsoft was developing OS2, they were probably developing on top of OS2 itself. Although, I don't know if they were running Presentation Manager. I mean, this, this is pretty dreadful. Like, this is... This is slow. And we are emulating it... Uh, what are we emulating? We are emulating a 10 megahertz IBM PS2. Or something very close to. So it's essentially equivalent to the system that I have sitting on the table behind me. The PM version of Word did not work Did not work with this. With uh, It needs 1.2 at the earliest. So I we are going to take a look at it, but we're not there yet. So there was this really big application... Uh, so let me close, let's close out of Word and let me grab, we're going to look at Sidekick. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing to note, oh yeah, no, it does work. Uh, you can use the mouse in OS2 applications. Like I can click there and it does work. It doesn't work amazingly well, but it does work. So Essentially, the way I have always taken Presentation Manager is it was a way to run multiple command line applications nicer. Because even in this period, um, like graphical user interfaces were not super popular until Word 3.0, uh, Windows 3.0, but this was all you got. You got the file system, the introducing, and the command prompt, and you had the e-adder. That was it. You did not get a lot out of the box. Like, Sidekick, so Sidekick was, um, and we will, let's, let's install it, because this is one of those things that will be easier to show, not, uh, show, not tell. Sidekick was... So, the product is called Borland Sidekick. And Sidekick was a personal information manager for OS2. Oh, right. Um, to set up presentation, Sidekick for Presentation Manager, drive you're copying from. Uh, if you're installing from A to C, type A. Type Setup AC. Yeah, okay. So it's one of these... Like, why you couldn't just have a normal installer app? That would be fine. We're going to install to hard drive. And then this will just copy files. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do wonder if the start programs thing, if it has any relation to the start menu, but eh. Probably unknowable questions. So, alright. So now we just let this copy files, but... Like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna pull pull the chat. Is presentation manager an upgrade? Like, for those who watch the 1.0 stream, like, are we actually seeing an upgrade here or not? Because. I feel like, like, I've always felt like this is not an actual upgrade. Because what we saw on the last streams, you could run OS2 in 512 kilobytes of extended memory. And you probably could go lower, but Presentation Manager doesn't fit in that little amount of disk space. So most of chat feels that this is an upgrade, so... Most of chat feels like this is an upgrade. I just feel like the performance penalty is just so much higher as compared to Windows and MS-DOS side by side. 
Yeah, like, you could see that the future was there, but the biggest thing is you can't close Presentation Manager. You can exit Windows 2.0. Um, wow, check out that install procedure. To continue, reboot by pressing Control, Alt, and Delete, which you're not actually supposed to do in this version, but um, you're supposed to shut down, but okay. Yeah. Um, there were, there is communications manager and there's no technical reason why you can't do that. There was Synchronet for OS2. There was like actual BBS programs for OS2. Um, so it's definitely a, it's definitely a, how do I put this? A step forward, but this is more like, I, I tend to think of this more of a technology demo than something you could actually use day to day. Like, a 10 megahertz 286 is too slow, but a 25 megahertz one is much more performant. And, uh, hey, Adam. So, it's definitely usable? I don't know. It's like, I got, I got mixed thoughts on this era of OS 2. I think that once I once I compare it to Windows 2.0, it will be a lot more clearer in the long term. Yeah, actually, let me write let me write down a note of what we're doing. So we're at one hour, two minutes. Uh, checking out Borland Sidekick for OS 2. So, okay, um, so Sidekick, I don't believe, installs any file. It doesn't add any groups, so we have to go to File System. Okay, and we're still waiting for it. I mean, I think it's, honestly, I think it's paging out. I honestly think that's why this is running this slow. Like, this is excruciating, like, there we go, finally. So if we go here to Sidekick, and we have, like, yeah, so we have a bunch of example stuff. So we have this, um, so we have a calculator. And at some point, the calculator might actually open. You know, sometime today. There we go. So the theory here is, let me, can I shrink this window? I can shrink the window. And actually, check that out. The uh, It actually scaled when I did that. So now if I open Word side by side... Let's let that open up. Like, I am curious of... Okay, so here's Word. So if we were to... Oh, I don't know. Let's make that... Ma let's maximize that. Make that small font. There we go. And now I could just... Drag this straight to the bottom. Actually, it's sort of gridlocked, so what I can do is... So, uh, let's say... So, what's... Let's try... Uh, you know, I, apparently I do actually have to keep this full screen because it's cut off otherwise. So, if I want to know what 71... 71 times 99... Seven thousand two hundred and nine. So two. Sorry, seven thousand twenty nine point zero 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 zero. I'm gonna hope that's an emulation glitch. I I I really hope that's an emulation glitch. That's that's a really simple test case to get wrong. 
What is this? This is no. This is running. This is running on a, an emulated 286. And you notice that when I when I make the window small, I can't see my answer. Can I? Is there a shared system clipboard? Look, every time I click it, it changes. Yes, yeah, so you can copy paste. So if I do, oh, I don't know. So if I copy this to memory. So memory recoil, memory clear. Let me try seven one two zero. Memory store. Oh, memory plus. It's how do you? This is not worked in the way I remember five function calculators working. Okay, so that one copied successfully, but. I can't copy it to the clipboard. But we know that 55, yeah, here it is. Interestingly, this was released January 1st, apparently, but 88. So this came out probably three months after extended edition went for general availability. Okay. So, but what we learned here is that 55 times 55 is 3,025. Oh, that is lag. So 3,000. So today I learned. Whoa, did you see that lag? That is the single event input. That is the single event input queue doing stuff. That 55 times 55 equals. Okay, and then this is going to be example dot doc. Okay, and that is saved. So that's this that's the calculator. Oh look, it actually has an icon. God, look how slow that is. I think it's paging out, like, but this is impressively slow. Um, let's, let's look at the other applications. Like, we're literally, th th this is almost paint drying territory. All right, so what else did Borland Sidekick come with? Like this version of it. We had Notepad. Yeah, but I should be able to have more than one application open. Like, it shouldn't be... Like, if I can't keep the file system app open, then this multitasking thing isn't what it's all hyped up to be. Like, it wasn't this slow under OS2 1.0 where we could easily and rapidly multitask back and, back and forth. Like, this is getting a baseline for what it is. I'm running with two megabytes of extended memory, which was the minimum requirements for this era. Although it may be... Hold on. So, minimum... Wow, the lag there. Minimum requirements for OS2 1.1, 286 processor. Um, I don't remember the actual disk space. I believe you just have to have a 20 MB hard drive and 2 or 2.5 MB of RAM. Also, see the single event, single. Wait for it to catch up. But Q do its thing. Like, I'm literally watching this lag in real time. Um, notepad. Uh, so let me put sidekick notepad lagging in real time. Okay, there we go. I just wrote the timestamp down. Let me just save this file. Uh, stream to notes. Let's see. OS2 PM notes. Just so I can actually find it again. Okay. Um, 
no, MG DXP, that would be, a, that's completely acceptable for server uses. Uh, server manager, uh, SQL Server has a memory requirement of eight megabytes. And an IBM PS2, and IBM supported this, tops out at 12.5 megabytes of memory. So that's what Notepad is. So, you know what, let's leave Notepad open. But notice here that how it has this F1 for help. So if we look at the lag. Yeah. Um, I am curious if that, what, what I was going to say is I'm curious if that is a part of the UI. Like we're going to have to get the example apps out for presentation manager. So let's see what this phone app is. And with every application I'm running, it's getting slower and slower. Like, we're going to have to free up some stuff running. Like, let's actually do that. Like, let's minimize file system. Oh, I think it's going over. Yeah, I think it locked. No, no, it's still going. Oh, feel the lag on this. It, it's it's like watching <laughs> this is it, 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 chat it's trying it is trying <laughs> i think it needs more memory chat <laughs> it's uh it's got a little slideshow So chat, should we upgrade the memory or the CPU first? Because I don't think we're going to get much further on the minimums. Yep. Uh, it does have a virtual hard drive light. I just ha don't have it showing on screen. Yep, it's still going. All right, you know what? I'm going to pull... I'm going to pull whole uh yeah i think we're gonna have to add more memory um let's put four megabytes in yeah let, let's go up to four megabytes uh see here four yep all right let's restart hardware because it's yeah it's locked up yeah we're literally we're we're gonna have to go up to four megabytes. I should tell you that a four megabytes of RAM in 1988 would have been about three to four grand, from what I've seen. Like, it, it I think about a thousand dollars per megabyte sounds about right, from what I've seen from memory. Two MIB of memory plus 640K was not enough. Trying with 4K of memory. Yeah, I mean, IBM was selling the Model 80, which was a server class machine with a uh, 10 megahertz 286. The main difference was you could put multiple MFM hard drives in the Model 80. Yeah. And it's going to get slower because I'm going to have to put even more uh, memory into this thing. Yeah, it's still going up. Like, this is probably actually accurate to the OS2 experience of the era. And when I have it working on real hardware, we will try it on real hardware. This is this is actually painful, chat. <laughs> it's gotta go all and we're not even going to boot. It isn't gonna throw me into system setup. 
Okay. And I actually didn't put enough memory in there, but you know what? That's fine. So conventional memory comes out to three, seven, twelve. Yeah, screw it. What, what? I'm I'm not gonna sit through that twice. Okay. Uh, well, no, I'd have to actually write a patch to the BIOS to do that, and like I'd have to reverse engineer it. Like this is a period. This is a period correct experience. I could up the CPU clock, but I really want to see what the actual bottleneck was. Like, we're doing this to learn. Yeah, I I definitely want to, my PS2, I've got the 30 pin sticks to modify, I just have to do it at this point. So, unfortunately this entire week, like all of last week, I was going all around New Jersey to run errands. I, I have some real life obligations that I'm, I have to see through, which is part of why this is been a little sporadic. Like I was, when I planned to do this project, I was planning to do two streams per week. And I'm lucky if I'm doing one, one every two weeks. You know, another uh, incense stick going. I mean, it did exist. There, you can actually even put a 386 and a 5150, and there are upgrade kits to let you do it. I mean, half the problem might be the very slow hard drive, but Speed Demon, this is not. It's a very thorough extended memory test, but I mean... My, the 286, like the IBM PS2, I still haven't figured out what we're going to do about the hard drive on that thing. So it's definitely, like, testing this on real hardware is going to be very important for a lot of reasons. Okay. Total memory, system disk, hardware desire. Yeah, that's all fine. Like, I do actually want to check what the actual minimums are, but I have seen contradictory information. Well, that's a lot faster. Like, that was in much, much faster. Like, this is almost, I can't believe it's not boat anchor territory. Alright, so if that is in fact the case, like, this is feeling, like, I'm feeling it right now, but even the mouse is considerably less, uh, her, you know, it's a, it's a lot less jerky compared to what it is. Like, this feel, like, there's still some lag, feels much less laggier than, uh, it did at 2 MIB, but that was probably a 1K to 2K USD upgrade in 1988 dollars. Like, even Windows 3.0 could run on one megabyte of RAM. Windows 95's actual minimum requirement was two megabytes of memory. Uh, Tom Runeberg, we're gonna check that. Yeah. Um, we are going to check that. Because I have heard that Presentation Manager in this version was the problem, not OS2 itself. Like, it got better with 1.2. But I do want to check that. So I'm gonna, let me add another note on the timestamp here. So at 1.20, running OS2 1.0 with four. So what were we doing? So let's reopen all the applications. Like, let's see how far we can go. Uh, there is unfortunately no resource monitor that I could find. Yeah, I mean, look, that is running a lot, like that loaded in a lot faster. So five times 25, 125 times 
it has some bugs, but it is considerably less bad than it was. So let's open Notepad. Still not fast. Yeah. 95, I mean, we successfully ran 98 on 32 megabytes. We haven't successfully run Millennium Edition yet. Uh, there's no control panel in this version. That would come, that would come in 1.2. But yeah, there's no control panel in this one. Did this, did I not? Okay, I guess I just didn't hit enter. Or something broke? Oh, there it goes. So I do want to check something. If we hit F1 here, because I did see there's a help file. The Sidekick Notepad is an easy-to-use compact word processor. You'll find the notepad... Oh, it opened another notepad. It opened a third notepad. So I do wonder if Notepad shares resources like it does with the other ones. So, yeah. So here's the help that... So yeah, so there's this entire this entire help program. So close out that. So we can close this. So this is Sidekick Notepad. It's similar to Windows Notepad, which existed. No, Notepad did not exist at this point, actually. You had write, but you didn't have Notepad. Similar to Notepad. And more functional than the e-editor included with this version of OS 2. So let's, let's minimize that. So then there's this phone application, which I'm assuming was like, this is what, this is what crashed us last time. I'm assuming this is some sort of Rolodex. So let's see if this loads up. Uh, yep, there it goes. Okay, so, um, let's go full screen. So, Frank Borland, VP of everything. So, this, this actually looks like, a, you know, like a graphical application. Like, we have buttons, icons, all that, card design, modem settings. Oh, right, right, so... We won't be able, I won't be able to show this, but this can dial an external modem. So let's look. Yeah, so here's the Borland phone book. And we can see everything there is to see about this. And then there are other cards in here. So like Ajax Realty, Acme Industries, Omega Associates, user-friendly so uh, software. And then what you can do is Sidekick can actually dial a modem for you. So you could have it place the call and then you could pick up the receiver and listen to it. I thought maybe Notepad was in 1.0 and I'm misremembering. Uh, yeah, you know what? It was in that. So we can add a new card. So let's make one for like, I don't know, N Commander. Uh, yeah, let's go with N Commander. Content creator CO restless systems. Um, I don't want to put my actual address here, so let me think of something funny. Uh, hold on, I know exactly what to put on here. Uh, I am curious how many people will get this joke. One, three. Uh, for those who don't know, that is actually the address of Wrigley Field in Chicago. 
And there is a reason I have put this down. And if you got this joke, I am hugely appreciative of your choice in movies. So there's that. Yep. So just a made up uh, address. Yep. Uh, it's a re I'm, I'm referencing the Blues Brothers. So there's the phone book. Yep. Actually, if you look really closely in the movie, right at the end when he's writing out the tax form, they still use that address. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Interestingly, there's two copies of Notepad here. So now let's open uh, Time Plan. Yeah, I didn't think many people would get that, but I, I'm still amused by the fact. Okay, so I, that couldn't be opened. Time plan could not be opened. So this is the time planner. It's a very subtle joke in the movie. Um, wow, this looks complicated. Okay, so this is the time planner. So, like, this is a pretty good idea of, like, if we wanted to do something, uh, I don't know, let's say 2 p.m., How does this work? So, I get, yeah, okay, so I think I have to click here and then I have to put the other time. So, let's say from three, it's from four to one. What are we doing? Uh, we're streaming on YouTube. And then. This I think we can get rid of. I think we can just close this out. So now you can see that this block is completely allocated. So now I can just save. Yeah, it's already saved. I can print it if I want to, but we don't have a printer. Uh, I could set one up, but uh, whatever. And we can see the weekly view. I mean, I gotta say that with four megabytes of memory, this feels faster than an Apple Lisa, but this would have been more expensive than a Lisa. Yeah. Also, I, I find it interesting that this is probably the earliest example of an MDI interface that I've seen. Uh, MDI being multi-document interface. You notice how all these are basically within this one window? Uh, let me keep that full screen. Wow, watching that redraw is not fast. Yeah, so well, th this is basically disappeared in this day and age. But it used to be that with multi-document interfaces like this, you could do multiple windows side by side in one application. And then you could minimize and maximize like that and they would just stay here word was prob when office was probably the most common mdi that i remember of because it was a microsoft pushed the mdi very hard in the 90s and then they realized it was a usability mistake so they went about face and they went back to sdi single de single document interfaces apple was always sdi for the most part they had very few like, I, you really couldn't do MDI with the way it worked, but that is basically how Presentation Manager works. So, this is what... Oh. Like, look how slow that is. What Presentation Manager 1.1 was like, even with 4 MIB of memory... A lot for this time period. It's it's still pretty slow and laggy. Like, hold on. Let's figure out the timing here. So this came out in '89, right? So what was this competing against? So '89. When did... 
So the Macintosh 2 had come out at this point. So let me let me let's actually do a little math here because I would say the closest competition, Macintosh 2, according to Wikipedia, five thousand four hundred ninety USD. In when was this released? Approximately nineteen eighty seven. Or. 13,110 in 2021. Well, I don't want to say 2.0 was its main competition for one reason. This was, this was for this configuration, this was not meant for normal consumers. Like, this was not, like, if this was meant for consumer, you know, vintage electronics, like, let's actually get some prices out here. Let me, let me figure this out. I don't like the new Wikipedia design. Like, I like. Why is this an upgrade? It, it's not. Yeah, let, let's let's get some let's get some actual price points down here. Like, um, so we have the Apple II. Uh, would would a Tandy One Thousand be period correct, or would that be too? Yeah, Tandy One Thousand's a little too uh, too old. Let's. They were still very common though. Um, let's try like a later one. So that would probably be like a Tandy 1000 TL. Uh, let's see here, Tandy. I'm not, yeah, okay, so Tandy 1000 TL. It would have had a 286, but it doesn't list a price tag for it. Uh, it's, it looks vertically sweat, stretched to me, so I think it's just the way it works. Like, this predates true type fonts. Oh, well, it doesn't predate them. They were less common. Okay, um, let's try and get some more prices. Yeah, so, like, um... Entry level Tandy 1000 TL with 286 appears to be closest consumer level. No, it's not the aspect ratio. Um, like, this is the way... We're going to have to try it on real hardware because obviously this is not working the way it's supposed to, but... This is 640 by 480, or it should be. So, I mean, definitely not a cheap system. So let me write this down in my, like, actual notes. So, with 4 MIB of memory, pretty laggy slowly. Um, what would be an IBM PS2 from this time period? PS2 Model 30 286 price. Because that would have been what this actually like this would have been what this actually came on um so ibm ps2 model 30 286 with hard drive because you do need a hard drive to run os2 2295 um before memory upgrade. But it probably... And then there was the Model 50 and then Model 60. So IBM PS2... You know what, let me switch full screen so you can actually see what I'm doing. Alright, let's so switch to desktop view and then let's tear this tab off. Okay. So, list of PS2 models. Yeah, like, this is just irritating. Uh, so what was the 50 then? Yeah, so here's the 50. So the 50 came standard with one megabyte of memory. The PS2, yeah. The 50 and 60. But they were still the same processor. They were micro-channel, but it was still a 10 megahertz 
286 with one weight state. So entry level systems were model 30, 50, 60. I'm gonna say with with starting before memory upgrades, because this said where did this here? Comparable model 50 was almost four grand. Uh, was between two and four k. Model 50 with MCA and non ESDA HD was 4K. And then I only uh, I don't even know how much the memory like you're talking another thousand for the memory easily. Uh, this is MK blue. Th these are MK blue switches and DOSBox would not have better results. I'm more or less trying you know what this is? This is probably running in EGA's 640 by 350 resolution, not the actual EGA one, um, which would explain why it's looking like this. So you're looking at, like, of these, the, the Macintosh is like the only one that I'd say is comparable, and a Macintosh is way more usable than this. Like... No, if it's if it's running at EGA resolution, it would be 640 by 350, but I, I don't feel like measuring it at the moment. Like this doesn't like OS2 does not feel like good value for the consumer. Like this was what the future was supposed to look like, but the future kind of doesn't look very good. Like Let me see if I can successfully save this. Okay, well that's saved. So where do we where are we going to take this from here? Because this was an interesting detour. I think I want to look at the extended edition applications. I don't think they've changed significantly from what we saw previously, but we might as well install them and take a look. So let's close all these applications out. Okay, close the file manager. Probably should just reboot, but sidekick. Okay. Still closing all of those applications. Oh. You know, like, there's definitely was no guideline on how to make an application in this era because the key shortcuts are extremely inconsistent. Okay, cool. So now let's open a windowed command prompt because that's... And there's actually a tutorial in the book. Um, let me, let's switch views back to there. All right, so OS2 install. Uh, so I don't, let's see here, which ones? QM is Query Manager, DS is Database Service, CM is Communication Manager, and Request must be Land Manager. So let's just do them all. So let's do DS install. Okay, Database Services, yep, that's fine. I don't think there's graphical versions in this version of OS2. I know there is in the next one. Okay, so let's put the disks back in. Seven. Okay, all right. So 
So now we're back to copying desks. Although the installer is a little bit different than what we saw before. And what we can do is what I've learned since last time is there's actually a sample database that we can install that I didn't realize was there. So we can use that to take a look. So now, now we just gotta wait for more and more files to copy. So how are we how are we doing as far as chat goes? Chat is looking good. We're up to 161 concurrent viewers. Yeah, 160, 160 uh, 164. Chat rate is good. And viewership is good. Okay, I am happy with that. I am definitely happy. Oh, I will also note that um, I now have GitHub uh, sponsorships available. I'm, I haven't fully set them up yet, but it is a new way to support the channel. I'm still working on figuring out how we're going to build more sustainable income so I can do this full time going forward. Like, I'm going to have to basically work out a full business plan for the YouTube stuff so I can actually, you know. That was one of, one of the big things I've been doing is I definitely, I, over the last month, I've been spending a lot of time in coming up with the number uh, that I need to sustain my life, like the actual dollar number. And I've got that number now. So now I have to figure out how to get my YouTube and, well, research budget really, because it's not all just YouTube, up to that number. Okay. Like, file copying is very slow under this version. I don't know why. So let me, let's take a look at our examining presentation manager. Yeah, so we are going to definitely take a look at the extended mode applications. I don't think we're going to do Windows today. I think we're going to save that one for another one. Because I feel like I'm going to have a lot to write about on the stream. I'm actually, once we, once we get to the next disk copy, I'm just going to step away from keyboard for a moment. Because it is surprisingly warm in here. But I want to wait until the disk is actually copying before I do that. Yeah, I mean, okay, you're about to complete installation. If you want to do Quarry Manager, yeah, that's fine. Complete installation. Yeah, oh, I should also write this timestamp down. Um, 143 installing. Query manager. That works. All right, so QM install for the next one. Query manager. I think my phone just went off. Okay, so that needs disk eight. Come on. There we go. All right, so while that copies, I'm just gonna step away from keyboard for a moment. So I'll be right back.
All right, and I'm back. So, you know, I'm one, I'm thinking one of the things that I may end up doing is I may pull out the compact portable and we will do Windows 2.0 on it for the comparison stream because I feel like that will be a much better comparison because 8088s were still extremely common in this era. Like, even in 88, I'd still say 8088s were something you had to care about. I mean, Microsoft didn't supported it until the 90s. And they really didn't disappear until, I would say, mid-90s. Like, I'm trying to think about that. Um... Hmm. Yeah, like, I, I legitimately cannot think. Like, chat, am I wrong in thinking this? But, oh, I gotta do a disk swap. Am I wrong in thinking... Come on, start it up. Start it up. Um... That if I used a the compact portable, which is a 4.7 megahertz 8088, it'd probably be a decent counterpoint to trying this on actual hardware. Like that machine runs pretty decently. I just really would have to erase and format its entire installation. Um, but yeah, that that might actually be the next stream. I might. Like, I just have to get the compact portable out, and I have to hook it up to the scaler. Um, and I have to move the IBM PS2 to the other table anyway, because I have to work on it. So, I might as well do that today. Or, well, not today, but near future time period. Because that way, I can do the soldering, I can have it open, and I can still have that table open. Although I think I just have to buy another deep table and be done with it because table space in this apartment is a very precious commodity. Alright, so that's Quarry Manager. Turn. And then, you know what? I think... You know, let's just try install Communication Manager. I don't think it'll let me, but we can try. Because we weren't able to do it last time. Um, prompted mode. Put disk 5. So far, so good. Like, compared to what we saw on 1.0, this just feels much more laggier. But I don't know how well it would or would not have worked as a server platform at this time, because when you're not using it, Presentation Manager shouldn't be exceptionally slow. It might not be exceptionally fast, but definitely not horrible you know once i've got the memory sorted out in the ibm ps2 you know maybe we'll compare both of that side by side we'll compare both the compact portable and the um and the uh the ibm ps2 side by side We'll see. Uh, it, it's going to be a multiple. It's going to be things to figure out over a period of time. So there's that. Actually, what I'll do is after I finish the stream, I'll move the PS2 to the other table. I will put the portable on the bench. And then sometime this coming week, we'll probably stream with it. I feel like my chat has frozen or people are just not talking. Uh, 
No, apparently, 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 people are just being quiet. Okay, that's fine. I don't know. So, and if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed this content, considering supporting me on Patreon, GitHub, or well, I actually, I guess on GitHub or on Coffee. I'm going to be reworking the sponsorships sometime in the next few days, so hopefully it will... Not next few days, in the next few weeks, like... This entire month has literally been me just... <sighs> running around constantly. Yeah, the... It is definitely, um, a very bare-bones installer, to say the least. Okay, so now we need disk 6. So it is letting me install Communications Manager. Yeah. Yeah, lunch for me was very simple. Like, I uh, I just had a pita with some sliced turkey and cheese. And that was it for me. Yep. No, I, I have GitHub. I literally have GitHub sponsors. Uh, sponsorships. I don't have the... Um, I don't have all the tiers and such set up yet but if you want to support me the nice thing about sponsorship is you can support me much higher than you can on patreon um okay so yeah i think we're just going to do complete the installation yeah okay uh Communication Manager has been successfully installed. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to use it for anything, but let's take a look. And the last thing we can install here is LAN Requester. And, you know, like, let's take a look at the whole thing. I, you know, I had mustard, and I didn't even think about this. Welcome to the IBM OS2 EE LAN Requester installation. Wow, this is, this is going to be different. Um, fix this to install to requester name, domain name, what adapter is installed? So we're on drive C. Let's get the panels. All right, so that's diskette nine. Like I figure while we're here, we should take a look at it. Cause like I said, there, there's almost no software available. Uh, Tom Runeberg, that is actually possible. Not, uh, that is potentially possible. I don't actually know what the support is. Um, so you can actually use the OS2 1.0 tech shell and IBM had it available. It's actually mentioned in ED, uh, EDM, how to write a shell replacement as well as a binary copy of the 1.0 shell. Uh, you have to replace it. You can't just, well, you can run it out and you'll just get command.exe, but yeah, you can use the 1.0 text-based shell if you don't need presentation manager. This is, this is, this is, like, why is it taking this long to copy desks? I mean, I guess th there was a lot of very questionable design decisions uh, in OS2. So, it's like, I don't know. It's uh, that was my train of thought derailing because of messages. Um, anyway, um, hey, look, disk ten. So basically, from what I have seen, the IBM version of this product was basically a complement to their AS four hundred line. It was basically, if you're already using IBM PCs. This is how you integrate with more IBM products. But I'm not sure that there was any compatibility between LAN Requester and their mainframe stuff. I think that was all Communication Manager. I'm not sure why Presentation Memory, uh, Presentation Manager is such a hog. Like, I don't.
get that. Windows 2.0 was much ha was fairly happy on very limited system resources. But we're going to investigate that. That we are going to investigate. So... Well, IBM did make the SIM sockets on the PS2 of this era proprietary. They will not take a standard 30-pin SIM. You have to modify them. It is possible. Yeah, like, I would love to get Communication Manager actually going. And if we can even just load it up, we'll at least be able to learn something. But I gotta tell you that... Impressive experience this is not, because for the price, you got no applications. A Macintosh was probably better for most graphical work at this time period. An Amiga would be much more capable. Like, if, Amiga would probably be the best thing you could spend your money on if you still want a microcomputer. I don't know enough about the Atari TT line to really put it in context. It's like... For the money you're spending on this, you're I'm not seeing like what you're actually getting, because there were like you could run Xenix on a 286 for less and have a better platform. Yeah. Yeah, and that um definitely um Dr. Uh Shopet. That is why I want to see if 1.2 is faster. 1.3 has almost no changes, so we're not. I'm not going to bother with it for the stream, although we can at a later point. Yeah, like this. This just feels half baked. And Windows, like as Chad has corrected me, Windows by itself not only had Notepad, you had a text adder, you had Write. So Windows by itself was worthwhile. And OS2 was like $300. It wasn't cheap. So I don't, I just don't know what to make about that. Wow. Um, thank you, uh, Emilio, for you. If only it was UWU, uh, UIU, Ugandan, I guess. 666 that sounds that sounds possessed what does that actually work out to in US dollars uh to UIU oh Ugari um it, so it's um uh Ugarian peso and I really do appreciate that I really do it, it makes a huge thing oh I also have enabled super thanks on my videos if you want to give me a super thanks donation it should be there although I actually haven't checked okay well we're still waiting for cop floppies to copy like this is painful yes definitely is something Is it done copying yet? Is it done copying yet? This, this is more paint drying than I expected. This is like top quality paint dry. This is, this is, this is IBM Blue paint drying experience. And Amelia, I really hope that you do get that job and I understand what you mean by bureaucracy. So best of luck, really hope it helps. Uh, Neozeed, thank you for the $9.99 British pounds donation. And yes, it is copying that floppy. Yes. Uh, I wonder what the most exotic currency you can actually get as a super chat be. Like, uh, the vi I mean, I've got the magic smoke generator right here. I've got a burning incense. Why do you think I keep the incense stick burning on my desk? I have to ward the demons away. You know, can't sleep. Clowns will eat me. Okay, still copying. Like, it hasn't crashed, but... 
if you were an IBM an IBM administrator, you were a very patient person. I have heard that the Acorn machines were extremely powerful for their time period, but they never made it. They they almost never made it here stateside. I do think Acorn released a few here. Like I do believe there's an NTSC Risk PC, but I've never seen them firsthand. Okay. Okay, so now we put the requester name and the domain name. So that would be... So requester name should be this machine. So I think we can just put workstation. Or not. And then we'll just put domain. Now it's probably looking for a network card. Uh, messenger and message pop-up. I'm actually not going to start either of them, but I would love to get this online. Wow, that's a network list. I hope you like Token Ring. You had the IBM PC network, which is its own proprietary sort of IBM-ness. Um, I'm actually going to write this timestamp down. And requester setup. I guess if we we're ever going to try this, I'm going to need one of these token ring adapters. I might actually have one of these token ring adapters. All right, so that's gonna update config.sys. It's gonna have problems because that doesn't actually exist, but that is, it doesn't even support ethernet. Oh, thank you for your the for, for the uh, first uh, super chat uh, that you've given. I like why does it say celebrate the first super? Oh, from uh, Jorgen um, Asmussen. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, I um, Lucy in chat. I've occasionally hit the insert ad button, but it doesn't happen all that often. So okay. If your service coordinator has received corrective service desks, you may want to apply them. The program titles LAN Requester and LAN Messaging have been added to the main programs list in the Start Programs menu. So programs can add themselves to that list. Okay, so return. Oh look, and they are actually there. Uh, it will not be a server uh, actually, I will. We are going to be a server. So uh, look at that. It actually added it. We now have. Oh, look. We actually have actual buns here. We have core communication manager, LAN messaging, LAN requester, and query manager. Uh, we are at 2 minutes 40, 49. Look. New apps. Let's check this out. Are these graphical or are these all console based? Okay, so communication manager is console based. I don't think we're gonna be able to do much with it, but we can try. Um, I would need token ring hardware. Okay. A configuration name is needed to start. So if I hit F4 here. Uh, I'll do the one that has US, okay. I don't think I can do much with this. If I press F10 to go to the action bar, I hit Alt, and you actually do have to hit F10. So, status messages, update configuration files. So this was mentioned in the manual that if you are not, and if you are just using it for like a small site, you have to like get the configuration file from IBM. And it looks like I can't even do anything with this because I can't change the configuration file. Can I, like what happens if I do transfer files? Start communications. Uh, 
God, that just feels broken. That like that is definitely not a user friendly application. So let's look at LAN messaging. Like this should be can't start. Yeah, okay, that's expected. LAN requester. Does this start? Doesn't start. Does query manager start? Query manager does start. I don't think this is very different from what we saw previously. Look how oh man, that is slow. Oh, this actually has been updated. This is different. Um, when we looked at it last time, it was in a different color scheme. So this has actually been updated. Let's load the example database. Let's like actually do that. Cause let's let's check this out. So uh it would probably be under dm lib let's see here no word cm lib ibm lan uh sql lib and then there should be like a sample Uh, it's something like SQL, I could just, oh yeah, there it is, SQL sample. Okay. Still going. Uh, you can compile OS2 software from OpenWatcom and from Linux, I've done that. It's still loading. I don't know why it's stuck in this weird box. Like, it's going. Okay, I guess it loaded the database. So now if I go into Query Manager, do we have a sample database? Definitely, definitely not. Trying to install early OS 2 is not easy. And uh, we don't have a sample database. Hmm. All right. So how do we install, let, let me get the manual out and let me figure out how we install the sample database. Like I actually do have the manual like right here. Or I have a PDF of the manual on me. Let me grab it and let's take a look at it. So, because that's where I learned that the sample database is a thing that actually exists. Okay, so user's guide for IBM OS2. And why did it open an edge? Come on. Problem is, it's like this 200 megabyte PDF file that doesn't like to be, doesn't like to open. Uh, sample. So here, so yeah, so this is something we weren't able to do last time because I didn't really want to do a whole lot of coding here, but I do just want to at least take a quick look at this. But how do I load the sample database? Like, this is hundreds and hundreds of pages of documentation. Defining views, defining a table, editing data in tables. Column reports, querying a database. Ah, here it is. Uh, well, not yet. Salary. Yeah, like there's this entire tutorial program here. So, if you want to learn how to use this, to open sample database. Ah, thirty-three three is the right page number. Select sample. Remove database manager, authorization IDs. Yeah, 
Yeah, it just says run SQL sample. The prompt is there, and I have no database. Uh, I don't know how much I really want to go into this. Like, if, I, if it just worked doing it, like, sure, but eh. Like, I feel like we just go down the rabbit hole until we're ready to do that on the day we are ready to do that. Um, so I guess that covers most of it. Like, are we really just ready to go to one? Do let me, let's, let me poll chat. Okay. Chat's just been quiet today. I don't know why. I think we've hit the limit of what we can really see here in 1.1. I think I want to load up 1.2 and just compare it. Like, I want to know if it got better. I mean, I, I guess, uh, let's, here's what I'm going to do. Let's, let me make a clone of this VM. All right, so let me shut this VM down. Yes, and uh, let me switch the view so you can see what I'm doing. First, I want to just rename that one. Okay. Uh, and let's make a clone of this. Let's call this IBM OS2 1.2. We're going to want to configure that. We otherwise want this identical. But we do want to replace the hard drive. Uh, and we want a 30 megabyte drive. And then I just want to store this on Dropbox. Just so I have it on other systems should I need it. So that would be IBM OS2 1, 2. Save. And then run that at the proper speed, and then start it up. And hopefully, you will be well behaved. Okay. I think at this point, I think I still have to install DAWs. Uh, you know what, we can try without, if we have to, we can always install it, so. Let me grab, um, let's grab Extended Edition. Actually, before we do that, I want to drop, I want to drop the amount of system memory, though. Because I want to see if it's usable at two, at two megabytes, because apparently that was a pretty big change, so 204, 512, uh, so 52, 60 like that, okay, cool, I don't know, I guess, I, I, what surprised me the most was the other time I've done a, uh, I did the weekend stream, I did it at night, and the turnout was surprisingly high for it. I mean, 142 is not bad for one of my streams. We were on IBM 1.1 Extended Edition. I want to take a look at the Microsoft 1.1, but I don't know if that's going to be a today thing. So I'm going to... Let me write some notes down for this. Um, so... IBM OS 2 1.1 Extended edition server components have some minor changes namely color scheme first version of LAN requester but needs token ring or PC network card and then this we just need to fix the settings 1530 Come on, run setup. up. 
Yeah, I... So, 1.3 was mostly bug fixes from what I've seen. Um... Like, 1.2 was essentially when the operating system was done. 1.3 was basically a service pack. I, there we go. I have to actually click on the window and then click on the key or it doesn't register the key press. So, okay, so that what was the total I needed. Um, 15.36. Save. I might end up doing more night streams during the week. Like, I just need to, um... The problem is I have a sleep disorder, so my concept of time is completely broken. Uh, crabs, no one is in my time zone. At least no one's in my time zone permanently. That, that, this, this, this be sleep disorder life. Uh, I will say, like, I will say that... Channel-wise and revenue-wise, the channel's been doing better month over month. I just have so much shit I've got to do, it's not even funny. Like, my personal goal is to try and stream weekly to the extent possible. I know I won't get every single week. But I want to be able to stream weekly, and I want to be able to do a video either monthly or every other month. So now this is going to work, question mark. Oh, you know, crabs, I forgot to drop an everyone ping. Oh, well. Oh, well. I keep forgetting to do that. It's... I... Now, that's interesting. Look, it doesn't actually have the extended edition in branding there. It just says operating system slash two. So maybe they stop making more base level changes at this point? Question. Yes, OS2 had multitasking since version one. Uh you can do it in you can do it in content. It Yeah, feel free. The HPFS driver has loaded. So this was the first version that supported HPFS. Yeah, crabs, feel free to do it. So we should install using HPFS. Okay, no, there's the extended edition banner. So, okay. So this this now brings us about a year later. We're now in 89. Oh, one thing I noticed is that IBM's manuals have printing dates in them, uh, which is actually going to be really useful because it'll let us lock down some things. So let's actually, let's, I want to read this. Welcome to IBM OS2 Extended Edition. The following screens will blah, blah, blah. During installation, you can install the dual boot feature that allows you to start either IBM OS2 or DAWs from the same fixed disk. So this is actually, this is actually important. So 1.2 re-adds dual booting. IBM OS2 1.2 has dual booting. Microsoft OS2 1.0 also had it. So actually, I want to set this up. And look, 3.3 or 4 is recommended for compatibility. This feature can also be installed if you have a previous version of OS2 that used dual boot. But 1.1 does not give you the option to dual boot. Unless you... there's something I'm missing. Actually, I just noticed something. Look, that's actually cut off. Refer to the Getting Started book for information on using DAWs and Operating System 2 on. It's probably because extended edition makes the prompt longer, but look, it actually gets cut off. Uh, Lucy in chat, 
the PDP 11 was able to switch operating systems from removable platters. So the concept wasn't unheard of, but it wasn't common in this time period. Yeah, like 1.0 and 1.1 very much have a tech demo feel. I'm actually going to note that. Tom Runeberg noted OS2 had tech demo feels. Oh, scroll. Oh, you're right. You can scroll down for more text. Do we, chat, do we want to check out this dual boot feature? I kind of want to check out this dual boot feature. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's. Like, we'd have to install DAWs and we won't be able to use HPFS, but I think that's okay for this. So uh, let's let's wait for chat to catch up. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, I probably don't actually need to ask, but I am going to ask. So, all right. So if we're going to do that, we have to install. Actually, have to install DAWs first. Uh. I have it here. I just have to find it. Thanks. Right. Yeah, so let's... Uh, I do want to check this out. Like, 1.1, I think... 1.1 didn't prompt for it, but we'll check. Oh, right. We're going to have to wait for this to run again. Okay. Well, patience is a virtue. Actually, if we're going to install... I do think I just want, for a point of comparison, I want to install Windows 2.0. We're not going to dig into it very deeply today, but I do want it as a point of comparison, so we might as well install it. Uh, early, early OS 2 GUI is based off Windows 2.0. So, um... So let's write the timestamps down. 224, installing DAWs 3.3. .3. Because I would like to do a, at least a very brief comparison of Windows 2.0 on the same hardware. Uh, so now we need to run fdesk, because this is a completely blank hard drive. Create. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, I want to look... It's not going to be in this stream, and it will be in the future. Um, I do want to look at the OS2 betas. Like, I really do want to understand the full chron chronology in this era. So now we gotta wait for the extended memory test again. And I actually, while this is going, I, let me make sure I have the right version of OS2. Or not OS2, of Windows. Uh, Cause I think we're going to need it. Windows 2.1 for 286. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That'll be perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell where they forked it off. Well, we're going to run Win286 here. Ozzy, you, good luck getting uh, Bash working on the NT POSIX subsystem. Like, that is dedication. If you actually get it working, I will be impressed. Because I don't think there's enough functionality to run Bash. Yep, that is NeoZed. Uh, Neo Z in, uh, Neo Z, that's Neo Z in chat, uh, who has helped a lot with keeping my notes in order for this project. Like, he has really helped me. Uh, and I want to thank everyone who has been an active contributor 
Hold on. Uh, is it one US? I always get that backwards. Uh, who has helped me do all the research for these streams thus far. Um, no, we're still, we're, we're running on 86 box again, because I still have to do work on the 286 to make it work. Um. So, when I have, the 286 I'm going to work on this week, assuming I have actual time, which is a bit of an ask with my life right now. So, um... Yeah, I think it's going to be a late night stream with the portable. I, I That is sounding like the right mood. Uh, yeah, so I actually have... Um, if you're on my Discord, um, we have a special emoji called uh, the, POS the POSIX subsystem, which is just Sigwen. It's like one of those things that I'm probably going to pay for at some point, but not today. Okay. So, alright. So that is going. I mean, honestly, I keep me... I have to install Sigwen... Like, I have to install Sigwen on... 11 because I gotta tell you I keep running into this really annoying edge case that Linux Windows subsystem for Linux is handy but Sigwin would actually be more useful so it's, we still have to figure out what we're going to do about the bloody uh, the blasted hard drive on that thing like I don't know what to do about it like, because that hard drive is, shall we say, a little bit cooked. And when I say a little bit cooked, I mean very, very cooked. Um, but it's good enough for now, and I could just probably get an IDE drive of some sort in there. It's just going to kind of suck. Like, there are solutions to this problem. It's just, how am I going to do it? Like, I might even just put a CF card in there. That would be perfectly blunt. Like, that is not my idea of a good time, but... What I can actually do with that ESDI drive is annoyingly limited. And so what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get... Actually, I'm going to write this down because I'm going to have to buy it. I think I'm going to need an EEPROM programmer. Um, blank EEPROMs plus eraser. Uh, network card. 16-bit. Because I don't like the one I have in there. All right, so that's that is Dawes installed. Let's boot up now at the problem with the XT the XTI or XT IDE is it's not IDE compatible. You can't actually run OS2 on one of them unless you're using the int13 interface. Like you should never um you should never be running one on anything that is an, not an 8088 at least as a main system drive. Um what I will end up probably doing is I'll probably just put in a 60 like we'll probably end up using this the ESDI drive for now. I will probably find a 16-bit IDE drive, and then I could put a compact flash card in there. The CF card will be newer and faster, but I think it's okay. Like, it's not going to be amazing in terms of performance. No, there isn't really a good way to skip that memory test. We're just going to have to live with it. Okay. So, now what I want to know... So what I want to know, like, I just want to look and get an idea of what, oh, with what MS-DOS was like in this era. I think it's just set up. Okay. 
Yes, yeah, so a set program for Microsoft Windows 286. Uh, yeah, IBM AT. We are EGA with high color display. Yeah, then we're fine. Uh, extended memory is available. So that's going to install HiMem. Like, I think I still want SCSI on that machine. What I may end up doing is I may end up patching the Windows 1.0 and 1.1 media to use a newer kernel. Like, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to kit bash those two things together. So I might as well try it because I know people have ran patches. And then I could use a SCSI uh, to SD or a blue SCSI on that system and it would be about as period correct as I could make it but I still got a lot of things I've got to do uh, as long as you're only running 16-bit applications or not Windows 9x you can make an XT IDE work but you will have a performance hit um, unless there's a 16-bit version that I am not aware of Like, you know what I noticed here is how much fat Like, these are only 720k discs, but look how much faster this is. Okay, so... Display disc... Uh, so, hold on. Disc copying much faster under Windows... 286, 2.1. Okay, let's just continue setup. United States, utilities 2. Okay, cool, that works. Start the fonts desk. Okay, so that's copying. Uh, 86 box is a full system emulator. It, it doesn't run anything on the native processor. It's ba it's based off uh, Sarah Walker's PCM. It has become the predominant fork of PCM because um, uh, Miss Walker was harassed quite I, I know you know I should rephrase that. From what I understand, there were problems. She dealt with a lot of people that basically gave her shit. I don't know the specifics of that, but I know that basically a lot of people just got upset and she basically just threw up her hands and was like, I'm done with this. Someone has taken it over, but as far as I know, 86 box has basically become the emulator to use. Unless you need to use a debugger, then you should use main. I need to look up the exact story with PCM because I don't want to be spreading misinformation if I did. I can put that tune back on. I we can go back a tune. We can we can go back in time. Okay, there we go. Like, I'm already seeing one major improvement over OS 2. I see an editor. Uh, yeah, I mean... The fact of the matter is that there's a lot... There's a lot of people... That would just... They can't... You, you know... I've seen a lot of ugly in the world... This is, uh, this, um, Long, uh, Longinus, um, that was why when, uh, Ashi Lina was being, was dealing with that, I VTubed for a couple streams, because the amount of harassment that happens to some people is just ridiculous. Um, 
Okay, all right, so now we need to run Memset. I'm hoping this just works. Memset. Uh, expanded memory. None. No, sorry, it's not going to be Memset. I just need high mem. Which this did install, so I don't actually need it. So, eject. Like, I think what I'm going to do for the Compact Portable is we're going to sit down and we're like, we're going to do an actual, we're going to write a document. Like, we're, we're going to do our findings and write it up on, on the Compact Portable. Like, we're going to try and do it all there. So. The problem, I mean, if you saw the comments I got about Stallman, you would be horrified. Like, I got, I just got, like, a tap of hate mail for that whole thing. I still occasionally do. I haven't gotten one in a while, but uh, it's just a matter of time before someone decides to take more objection to that. So, there is that. Okay. Come on. I think I saw Hyman and Mam install there. So Windows Win. So this is Windows 286. Oh, that is bright. And it's it's I'm still having some mouse accuracy issues, but I mean Like, that works. Let's move that to the side. Because then I can open card file. I mean, look at the performance difference here, chat. Like, this is not, this is night and day. Like what? How much system memory do I have available? Uh, there is a way to see that. I think it's in DAW's executive. This isn't even using extended memory. Look, this is just running conventional. Like I, for whatever reason, it's it's not seeing conventional memory, probably because of a problem with high mem. Like if I open uh, Paint. Are you? Let's see here. If we open paint. Okay, so that one's not reporting. If we go to right. Is right reporting it? I guess not, but I mean. Look how much more performant this is. I mean, even with. Four megabytes of memory. OS2 is nowhere near in this league. Uh, let's change the palette. How do you change the color? I get a uh, pencil. Yeah, pencil works. Yeah, I mean, like, this is just a complete night and day difference. And that's, I mean, you have actual useful applications coming right out of the box. I mean, here's Reversi. Like, try and imagine doing this on OS2 1.2. I mean, it would be a slideshow. Am I actually going to beat the computer here? Uh, I might actually, because it's based off CPU speed. Okay, oh, well, maybe not. Oh, we'll try. Let's see here. I can place one there, one there.
Yeah, I'm probably going to lose. Oh, well. AI is pretty good at this game. But it's one of those things that you can always... Fi oh, no, maybe I will actually win. Hold on, let's see here. Oh, no, I lost by 18. Yeah, I mean, 2.x will run on XT, but yeah, this is Windows 2.0. And I mean, this is a world of difference better on, this, on the same exact hardware. This is a world of difference better. Well, that's, that's why we're going to look at 2.1. We're going to look at 2.1. Um, but this was the competition. Like, we had this calendar app. And we are going to try this on an 8088, but this is the point of reference. All right, so now that we've got our point of reference, uh, Windows 286, Windows 286. Let's let's do this for real, and let's see if there is an actual tangible improvement. Uh, we're not going to do a boot. We're not going to do a boot. I, I don't want to use HP, uh, HPFS right now. I'm going to stretch my legs while this does its memory test. So I'm just going to step away from camera for a moment. And I'll be right back. I just realized my mic has been muted for the last two minutes. So, whoops. Um, yeah, maybe we'll try 1.3. I don't think there's a huge difference between the two, but we can try. Okay. Because 1.3 would have been 91. I mean, that's a pretty... Sig or 90. I mean, that's a pretty step... Uh, pretty big step forward. I mean, 2.0 was a pretty large leap. So 2.1, 1.2. So let's see what this looks like in comparison. Okay. Um, okay. Disk one. Most people never used OS2. It was pretty rare. Like, you... IBM sold it on some machines, and it was obviously well supported on their hardware. But by 1996, they basically saw the writing on the wall. Uh, HPFS is the high performance file system. It was the I can't believe it's not fat all file system alternative. Okay. 
So. So once again, we are now back to just transferring files. Uh, HPFS is actually a pretty big upgrade over FAT. It's just not journaled, um, which was the big thing with NTFS. Yeah. Oh, because NTFS... Uh, sorry, uh, HPFS was supported on NT 3.1, 3.5, and 3.5.1. And it could be added officially to NT 4 and 2000, with support being dropped on XP, but you can actually keep going if you had to. Uh, do not format. Okay. Dual boot warning. OS2 shell. To use the dual boot feature after installing IBM OS2 Extended Edition, correct the shell statement. Drive C. Set command spec. I've never seen this warning before. Okay, uh. Retrieve command. Yeah, we'll add retrieve command. Uh, we don't need the command reference, and we'll accept. Okay. Um, I don't really drink alcohol very often. If I do drink, I generally prefer a red or a rosé wine. I'm not a big beer person. I never have been. Um, some lagers are okay, but I've really never met a beer that was like, oh, I must drink this. I'm okay with mead. Um, let me see here. What else? Like a good nothing. Like if I'm going to drink, nothing beats a good rosé. Uh, some whiskeys and some other spirits I enjoy, but I just don't drink alcohol very often. So, all right. We'll definitely look at DR Dawes at some point. I just haven't decided when or not i'm just kind of stretching here because even i'm getting a little bored at just flopping discs because ugh. like the problem with science is 90 percent of it is just staring at progress boards and waiting for lab results it's just the one percent that is actually interesting like i i won't deny that I've been taking a lot of inspiration from Bobby Broccoli on the way that he has done a lot of his videos on fro uh, not so, um, scientific fraud. So I've been using that as a presentation style, but I very much want to document actual academic stuff. Like the amount of things that I know about OS2 that are right and wrong on literature is absurd so that's really where this is all coming down to is i really i want to know where the beginning and end starts but i mean look how slow the files the disk copy i mean the whole thing is just slow The thing is, uh, Mad uh, Mad Crow, you could do that with OS2, but you're doing that years, and y you won't have the memory to do that until years and years after OS2 was relevant. Yeah, there was a guy that faked the periodic table. There was um, uh, Sh uh, Shron, or uh, Shun. Um, he faked, um, super connectivity. Uh, he had actually at Bell Labs, which is here in New Jersey. Uh, that was a fast, that was a fascinating thing to read, but yeah. It wasn't that OS2 wasn't very optimized. It's that IBM rejected certain optimizations. I know for a fact that the Microsoft OS2 versions use load all. I think we're going to have to look this but i think we're gonna have to do this i were 
the Microsoft OS2 versions noticeably different in performance? Because I am, I'm going to, I actually just put that question on my notes. Because I think at this point, I have to ask that. We know that there are differences between the IBM and Microsoft versions. And for reference, I will, let me actually put this down. Uh, for reference, I am emulating a 10 megahertz 286 with 287 and 2,560 kilobytes of conventional memory. This is a little faster than the last one. The when I, we did OS2 1.0, I emulated it on an 8 megahertz. Uh, I didn't realize that a period correct machine would have been 10 or 12, but it shouldn't make that big of a difference. Old equals cool. Uh, there aren't a lot of books about OS2, and especially not this period of OS2. The books that do exist are talking about 2.0, which is too new. I'm really looking at the original. Yeah, like, like most of the pe like, this is what I am, like, we are going to look at the 32-bit era. Like, the time scope for this project is probably 1984 to 1994. I might go into the warp era. Like, I, I'm sitting here thinking if I really want to go into the warp era. But by time OS2 Warp shipped, it was way too late to make a difference. 95 and then 98 had basically taken over the market. Like, in 1992, OS2 was still some market share. I think it got up, I want to say it got up to about 10 to 20%, but maybe I'm thinking it's too high. Like, it was high enough that people cared about it, but not so high enough that anyone was really worried about it. Actually, I'm going to put that on my two questions list. Um, what was the actual sales unit, the sales numbers for various OS2 versions? Uh, you can't. Um, OS2 1.2 bombs and anything faster than about a 50 megahertz system. Yeah. Uh, Neo Z, can you get that in writing? Because I'll do it. I'll actually read parts of that on stream if I can get reproduction rights. Yeah, well, the thing is that war but the thing is, was warp actually like, I guess we should cover warp three. But I don't think it's going to really have that much information in it. But we'll see. Um, I do think that after we look at OS2 Cruiser um, or 2.0 and 2.1, I will make a video on this. And then we will take a look at the later versions of it. But I, like I said, I'm thinking we're going to go have four streams in total. We're going to have, we had the last one. We're going to have this one. Um, I think I'm going to pull out the compact portable. And we're going to do the comparison on the compact portable of what this was just going up against. Because the portable is an 8088. And I have this horrible feeling that on an 8088, it's it, it, Windows will be better. I, that's my general feeling on it. But we will see. Okay. God, I am fidgety today. Like, yeah. Like, I am just not seeing a reason. Like, OS2 was a potential future, but I don't know if it was the potential future. The biggest thing we have to compare it to is NT. Like, we really need to look at the NT era. And that's kind of why I don't want to get into warp. 
because after warp i have to compare it to nt and and well sorry after cruiser which is 90 91 i have to compare it to nt and that gets complicated Because that would mean we have to look at NT 3135, 351, and then probably the final. Uh, we also have to look at Landman. Like, Landman is going to be a project. Landman is going to be a sucky project. Although, I can run it on the 486, so we might even do this on real hardware. Um, I just have to put the CF to IDE card in that system. Like, yeah, that's that's just going to kind of suck, but we'll deal with it. The thing is that, in a lot of ways, I think NT was the superior product. But I'm not certain about that. And we are going to look at Xenix. I'm going to, basically, I have this entire hypothesis of things that I do and don't want to take a look at. So, um, which would be Advanced Netware 286. Uh, you know, hold on, I should check something. Hold on. Yeah, I forgot about this. Um... So this got sent, this was given to me, uh, sorry, it was found in uh, a bunch of vintage stuff. I actually have a box copy of Oracle for Windows. Yeah, here it is, Oracle for Windows. I don't know if it's complete. I've never tried to install it. Yeah, hold on, come on, come out. Oh, I see. It's just the Oracle card runtime. It's not actually the complete version. Oh, well. It said, it said Oracle in the box. Oh, well. So it's not the full version. That's what it was promised to me as, but I only paid like 20 bucks for it. So, like, whatever. Um, No, you could run NT on a 486. I've done it. It's It really cares more about memory than anything else. Yeah, it's just the runtime. Um, yeah, or there was a version of Oracle for DAWs, and there was a version for Netware. Um, uh, NT3, yeah, NT3 still had the graphics in user land. That's why it's so notoriously laggy. So at some point, we will, I, I guess I'm going to have to... I, at some point, I do need to find, like, actual old Oracle versions. I have a copy for AIX, but it's on tape. It's like, uh... I mean, we've run Windows 98 on a 486. Apparently, I'm going to run all the operating systems on the cursed 486. Um, because we're going to run it on the... We're going to run it on the 1992 33 megahertz DX. I just have to put it in an IDE drive. That's all I really have to do. This is still copying files. I, I, I do wonder if this is an emulator problem or not. Like, this is abysmally slow. Uh, the problem is you can't really install Unix on it. I've tried. It really doesn't work well. Um... Oh man, I'm gonna have 64 megabytes on NT on that machine. That machine is gonna be so ludicrously overkill, it's not even gonna be funny. Because that machine actually supports Land Manager. No, it's still going. It is still going. It's just going very slowly. Like this this is This is just abysmal. Um Yeah. No, this is just... It is copying from actual floppies, but, like... 
The floppy controller is supposed to be rate accurate, but we saw what it took under Windows 2.0. Why is it this? This is just impressive. Impressively bad. Fewer than 20,000 copies have been sold. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so now we're uh, insert the install disk at. Okay, and transferring files. Yeah. No, the system hasn't hung. We just changed floppies. It's just exceptionally slow. Like, I, this is why I want to try this on real hardware because I'm not convinced that this is accurate performance. It could be completely accurate performance. Like, when I have the PS2 running, we'll probably run 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 on the real thing. Yeah, I mean... Well, the OS2 subsystem was not unfinished. That You can install Presentation Manager for NT. Because um, remember, NT was... The, the divorce agreement between Microsoft and IBM went both ways. Both companies had the right to each other's products prior to 1991. So NT kept the OS2 1.0 support that it already had and was built on top of the actual OS2 source code. Um... My IBM, meanwhile, continued to have rights to Windows 3.0 and 3.1. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, the OS2, the thing is that the OS2 subsystem on NT is probably better than NT itself. Like, the way we're going to test that is with um, running Land Manager on it, really. Uh, we will be able to... So, incidentally, um, I now have a graphics card that will let me run NT for PowerPC on my RS6000. I have to test it, that it's actually going to work, but it should at this point. Driver support diskette. No, we do not. Like, that might... Like, that's going to be a, a near future stream where I'm just going to, like, have fun with that. Uh, we are still putting disks in. So I think what I, yeah, so I, I definitely have a solid plan for what we are doing later. Yeah, I just, I need to see if this is even going to work. Um, because I have an RS6000 model 140. It didn't, it had an IBM graphics card. It was, it's technically too new for NT4, but it is a prep machine. And it does start ARC install. So I did buy a compatible video card off the Ebays. So I now I want to see if it will work. I also want to see if uh, PowerPC maps were not prep. If they were prep machines, it might have worked, but it probably, but they can't. I also want to see if I can run the Solaris PowerPC beta on that machine now that I have the correct graphics card. I don't think it'll work, but I want to try it. Come on, Ignite. There we go. Got it. Definitely, the the incense sticks keep the demons away. It's how uh, it's how I deal with this. Um, I picked up I picked up an S three Vision uh eight six forty. I also picked up a WeTech uh, P9 
uh, a P9100, which actually has an IBM part number on it, so it's probably was pulled from one of the earlier IBM machines. So it should be able to start, but I haven't actually tried. Like I might, I might do um, the the alpha port of Windows NT is 32 bit. There is a unreleased 64-bit version of it, but that was never released outside of Microsoft. The official alpha version is 64, uh, 32-bit. I haven't tried the newest Solaris. Like I, I stopped caring the moment Oracle bought them, and I just used a Lumos. I have heard that Oracle has basically cut it to nothing in terms of support. Like it's. It's not dead officially yet, but it's about to die, from what I've heard. But we all know that Sun, that Oracle bought Sun for Java. Okay, so now we wait for this to run. We wait for this to run. Yeah, so this came up. It was something I cut out of the original stream, but Microsoft did their initial port to 64-bit on Alpha hardware, even though Alpha hardware was already dead at that point. Um, just out of curiosity, how long was my last live stream? I'm just slightly curious. Okay, so it is still loading uh, all that. That's fine. So it was, okay, so I only went five stream hours last time we looked at that, and that was a lot of things I documented. So I don't, my main reason I don't want to make this a super long stream is I still have to write this all up. Uh, if you been, you uh, you're on Discord, Neozid, you should see what's being found on that topic. Let me do it. Like, this is just ugly. Like, okay, so this is starting up. And it's still starting up. This is 1.2. We're, like, we're still waiting for this to come, to come up. I mean, this is just painful. And then we are probably about to end up back in the installer. Yeah, I'm using 86 box. Um, the, the physical hardware is still having some issues. Like, I, I have to wonder if there's a problem with 86 box. It doesn't feel like it should be this slow. Okay. So we don't have custom install disk. Uh... Basic configuration services allow you to create communication basic config. Uh, no. We installed extended edition, but we're not really going to use it. Oh, that's probably why it's running as slow as this. It's probably starred the database. Okay. I just heard my phone go off. Someone contacted me. Okay. Uh, that's something I'll deal with after the stream. All right, so disk six. All right. I mean, uh, Mad Mad, uh, Mad Crow, if you can tell me why it's running this slow, please let me know. But I'm running this on pe a period correct configuration. Yeah, I'm running this on a period correct configuration. Um, I might cover DR at some point. Uh, no, this is, this is 1.2. This is not what this, this is not 2.0. Um, DR DAWs is hard to cover because you're trying to cover something that isn't usually visible for the most part. Uh, so it's on the list. I have to think about it on how we're going to do it. 
the thing is that a 386 is going to be 20 to 20 megahertz minimum or 33 megahertz. That is too fast for period correct. Uh, 386s were available in this era, but um, they weren't common. This is this is configured for the actual hardware that IBM was selling OS2 with, which was 10 megahertz, 286. Like that was how it came from IBM. Hi, Dennis Hill. Yes, I uh, I set the disk speed to 35, uh, 3,500 RPM. Yeah, Jim, the, gra the graphical environment. Um, I probably will talk about it if I ever talk about Atari. Uh, yes, but IBM wasn't selling them. Well, they were, they may have been selling them, but they weren't the main line. I mean, the big machines that they were selling OS2 for were Model 30s, Model 50s, and Model 60s. There were 80s and 90s, which were the 386 class machines, but those were not end user machines, not in this time period. Like those are big honking monsters. Like, I wanna say LGR did on his IBM PS2 motherload. I think he has a model 80 and that thing is ginormous. Like, I would have trouble having that in my apartment. No, um, we're running on fat. We're not running on HPFS. Yeah, you'd buy an 80 as a server or potentially for desktop publishing or CAD work. But the workstation stuff, the things that the end user would have seen OS2 on that was running Communication Manager um, would be a Model 30, a Model 50, or a Model 60. I honestly think I'm going to have to buy a Model 50. I, like... I really don't want a Model 50 in my life because it's but it's 16 bit micro channel. Like I make my life very difficult. But it is what they would have done. Like I I think I think I want what I'll want to do is um The thing is that there was already a large install base mad crow that were supposed to upgrade to see os2 was the operating system for the 286 it's what ibm had promised but windows was better in every regard from what i have seen thus far but i don't uh, but this is more why i'm doing this like we are trying to understand just what went wrong and there's going to be multiple points to this because there's a lot of factors that have to be considered. Was the 286 part of the reason why OS2 failed? It's, uh, or alternatively, what, what, like, I've heard that the 286 was the blame. I've heard memory requirements are the blame. I've heard a lot of reasons of why OS2 failed for multiple people and multiple reasons, and none of them appear to be definitive. I mean, hell, it's hard to even find OS2 software for this era. Like, Neo Z, do you actually ran OS2? Like, do you remember, like, in this time period, do you remember anything besides the Microsoft applications available for Presentation Manager? Um, Microsoft, the thing is that a 286 and a 386, per, clock for clock, are, the, are exactly the same performance. A 286 running at 16 megahertz will be performance identical to a 386 running at 16 megahertz. The problem is that the 286, the 286 could be had from multiple vendors. AMD had a version of it. Um, what are we going to install here? I'm, I think we're just going to install, I'm, I think we're just not going to even, oh, well, I guess we are going to install that. Uh, 
I think we just want to install database manager because it's really the only one I care about. Yeah, database manager because this one will have a UI. It's possible, you know, CM may have an UI, so maybe we'll take a look at that as well. Okay, and so we'll install both of these. I guess we're gonna have to upgrade it. Uh, we're not going to use remote data services. Yeah. Like I have never, I have not seen OS two in the wild. Um, One dot X, but it doesn't mean it wasn't used. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of just having some pretty deep thoughts at the moment. Like, I am worried that running Extended Edition is going to interfere with the per performance numbers. So, we will see. Like, I might, we might have to, when I do this on real hardware, I'll do Standard Edition. Like, the only thing I can really think of is Microsoft's own apps, and that's about it. I don't know. I'm, 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 I guess I'm mentally thinking about this, like... I'm worried that the performance of 86 box is not accurate, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put, write that down, like, 86 box performance seems unusually slow, confirm on real hardware. Well, the family mode applications were not hard to make, um, and that's something I kind of do want to look at more about this because like i said there's this entire period of history that doesn't seem right ozzy the thing is that that's speculation you can't unless you have an actual way to back that statement you can't i can't put that out there i have to prove what i'm saying and that's why we're doing it okay um Okay, so there were ports of GNU stuff for OS2, uh, but I thought Mirrors was a 2.0 era, not a 1.0 dot, a one, uh, one dot X era. Yeah, I I'm inclined to think that presentation man. Well, hold on, let me let me actually think about this. Neozed, how well do you know the 286? Because on the 8088, and presumably on the 286 running in real mode, you can just talk to the hardware frame, the video memory directly. It's actually, I should write this down. Um, was 286 segmented, uh, segmented protected mode? Responsible for slow UI performance of OS 2. Because if you'd have to do a far call to and from, like there is, that is actually a really valid point. Like that's an exceptionally valid point here. Uh, this is the stream, stream beats library. I should really pin that somewhere. Like, well, 64K segments are a limitation for not having, the thing is that segments stuck around up until the Windows 
9x era and even then you still had to be aware of them to some degree unless you're on nt because so much of windows 9x was still 16-bit under the hood uh I think, we, I think we're gonna have to look into that. Like, I think we're gonna have to benchmark, um, potentially benchmark PM. But I mean, the whole thing just feels so slow. Unless it, I mean, it doesn't look like it's paging out. It looks like it's just reading the disk just very slowly. Like, how long have we been installing for? We've been installing for 40 minutes. Unless the disks maybe are compressed. I mean, there were a lot of them. A RAM expansion on an ISA bus shouldn't be a performance bottleneck as long as it was a 16-bit memory expansion. Like, the address bus on the 286 was 16-bit, so the ISA bus should be identical there. The reason I don't want to use 386, 386-era hardware is... Microsoft versions of OS2 have some 386 specific code on them. And one of the very big things was 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 support for the 286 was something that IBM mandated. I've been told that the driver development kit for OS2 1.x has actually resurfaced. I don't know if it has the GPI interface in it, you know, but what we can do is we can look, look at surviving DDKs. Like, I don't know how far we're going to actually take this, but... I think the biggest thing I'm going to want to answer next is, was the problem the 286? But we're going to see how much of a performance increase it actually is. Like, um... Yeah, it's like... I've got a lot of thoughts about OS2 and just putting actual numbers on it kind of helps and it also kind of doesn't. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to just stretch my legs while we think cuz this is taking its sweet time to copy. So, I'll be right back. You know, I just had to remind memory that I had packages from Amazon arrive last night that I'm going to have to run downstairs and get at some point. They should be fine, but I've had problems with mail being stolen in this building before. 
This is taking a very sweet time. Like, I guess I'm mostly trying to figure out where we're going to go next after this, because we're starting to hit the limit of what I can do in emulation, but I really think the only major points left is I want to get an idea of what Windows 2.0 and 3.0 were like in this time period. And then um, on semi-period correct hardware. And then see what OS22.x was like. The thing is, so we've done a fair bit with retro Linux. I mean, I did the soft landing video. I've also done Yggdrasil. Um, okay, well, that all installed. So database manager is completely, has properly installed. Uh, we'll leave land requester along, along, because the main reason I care about database manager is because it's got the other land man. Did this freeze up? I just hit F3. Extended edition has been installed. Okay. Yeah, we will install, we're gonna install presentation manager, but we have installed OS2 software. I installed the version of Word 5.5 for OS2. So let's let's see what this was like. I probably need like I probably need to disable the database manager. Like I think I'm going to have to do that the moment we load in. Uh, which is going to be annoying, but I want to have the memory configuration be the same. Oh, this is excruciatingly slow. Uh, Tom Runeberg, there isn't a lot of software to install. That's the problem. Like, literally, it's the lack of software is like a constant. All right, let's see here. All that's loading. Yeah, I probably need to disable database manager, but let's just see how far it actually gets. Okay, and let's write this timestamp down. Uh, three hours and 30 minutes. Three hours, 30 minutes. Actually have IBM OS 2.1.2 installed. Apporting Pride is something I will probably do on the next charity stream. That will almost certainly be... I, I might do a one-off charity stream. Like, look, application. So here's, here's why I installed Extended Edition. It actually has Quarry Manager built into it, but I do want to see, and it also has a graphical adder, although this is just a tad slow. So, just paging a little bit. Can we, I think we can disable Yeah, I think I'm going to have to give this four megabytes of memory if I want to do anything useful. Okay. Um, if I tell it to, I want to just stop. Uh, stop DBM.
Hopefully it'll go faster now. Still running. No start command was issued. Okay, so I guess it's not running. I think this really needs four megabytes of memory. Like, this is lag. This is impressively lag. All right. User profile management services. I think this is part of... Yeah, so... This... OS2... Did not support multi-user, but... Extended Edition did some really horrible hackiness on this. Yeah, like... This is... Better question mark uh yeah i think i think you're right neozid i think i am yeah i think it just locked up oh no it didn't lock up but it is that is painful all right you know what? let's give it a full four megabytes of memory and see if it's happier because if there's a performance increase here, I'm not seeing it. Like, this is dreadful. Alright, let's, let's try giving it 4 megabytes of memory and see if it helps. So all disk activity has stopped. Alright, so and you know what? I'm gonna just change the background music. Let's let's get something more interesting out there. You know what? we'll just start right from the beginning. Uh I mean the redraws seem better, but I mean it's still not good. So let's let's bump this all the way up to let's give it four megabytes of memory. So that works out to be 4,000, yeah. Okay. I mean, the graphics driver seems much more responsive, but it's still very slow. I like... Uh, can you look up what it was for Standard Edition, Dr. Shuppet? Because if Standard Edition is less like minimum memory let's see here minimum memory apparently two it was two megabytes was the absolute minimum I mean it's running but it's not running well uh, let's see here. So that's all the stuff they had about HPFS. Um. You know, that is a fair point. That given the the graphics, the high definition graphics, it might be struggling. I could drop it down. We could try running with CGA graphics. It might be faster. Yeah, the, this mem test is painful. I mean, it just feels excessive yeah like i said i have to patch the bios to skip this memory test i just have to do it it's it's one of those things um the problem is i'd have to load the the bios into a debugger if i really want to do it easier okay it's free 712 free 712 Three seven twelve. 
Well, a Mario guy, that's why I'm convinced that... I'm not convinced that this is running at the right speed. Like, I am I have this distinct feeling that this is running slower than it should be. But I don't know how much slower it's running. That's why I want to test this on real hardware. So, IBM said that 1.2 is recommended 3 megabytes of memory and 30 megabytes of disk space. That is good. Can you please post the link to that in uh, chat? Uh, let's see here. So, OS2 minimum requirements, free MIB, 30 disk space standard edition. And then I just accidentally closed my notes file. Okay. I, uh, it is, it's, it's a generic 286 with the, with an NCR BIOS. Uh, NJ Road fan, I'm going to have to write those benchmarks. Like, legitimately, I am going to have to write those benchmarks. That is a. That is just painfully slow. Yeah, like, I feel like we're going to have to try 1.3 to see if it's any better, but question mark. All right, so let's let this load up. Uh, NJ Road Fan, it has to run under OS 2. Like, it doesn't help me if it's bare metal. Because it has to run in protected mode. Yeah, but the the MCA bus should the ISA bus should not be the bottleneck on a 10 megahertz 286. MCA was more useful for the 386 and 486, but by time it started becoming relevant, PCI was coming off. Yeah, the memory is off because 86 box is just like that We're running. It really is like 3.5 megabytes, but uh, that is actually a bit more performant. Like, look the mouse, look chat. That is actually usable. That is, like, way happier. It's not fast, but it's happier. Like, I can now open this F-Disk utility. I don't know why they felt the need they needed a graphical F-Disk utility. Oh, you know, no, I know why they did. Because um, you can actually do mirroring with this. Because, look, you can make logical drives. So, yeah, there was, like... Some sort of early raid stuff in this. So, okay. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Like, yeah, see, this is much... Fa like, it's still not great, but this is much faster. Yeah. So this hasn't changed all that much from the previous version. Uh, although you notice that the help thing is gone... So, yeah, 1989, all rights reserved. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that installed here. Um, let's see if there was any major changes to the introducing OS 2. Because um, I don't think there was, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, where was that? Or did I not install it? I may not have installed it. Oh, here it is. Introducing OS2. Introducing base command, base operating system. So has this changed much? Doesn't look like it's changed much. Oh, look. Okay, so what it was supposed to be is it wasn't supposed to be A. It was supposed to be add and start programs. But notice that it still has that very strange bottom bar. Like, this doesn't look like this has changed at all. Yeah, this looks... This looks identical. Okay. Uh, 
I guess we're going to have to look at the Microsoft versions. I uh, guess we're going to need to look at Microsoft OS 2 versions. Okay. Uh, that may just be a generic change with OS 2. So let's, let's install some applications, or let's install the application. Because there's really only one... One and a half. I can't easily get Willow on this hard drive, although I should. Getting Willow on this drive would be a giant pain. I really don't want to do it. Uh, let's install. Let's install Word. Because to install Willow on this hard drive, I'm like going to have to mount the hard drive or figure out how to copy the files to multiple disks, and I just don't want to deal with that today. Um, was PageMaker available for OS2? You keep telling me to try it, but you're not... I don't think there was an OS2 version. Okay. So install Word for OS2. PM Word. I do find it interesting how they used a console-based installation app. But they, um... Okay. I would have to find... The thing is that... I know Excel was available. But PageMaker and Describe, I feel like we're 2.x. I don't have either, and I don't feel like looking for them. So, we're not going to deal with it today. Um... I don't know. This has kind of been a low-energy stream for me. Like, I just feel kind of dead. Like, I don't understand why Disk.io is this slow, though. I mean, I remember this being true for Windows uh, 3. something, uh, 3. 0 and 3. 1. Like, this was pretty common, but still unusual. I've never installed, um, I've never installed it for this time period. Um,. Utility. Yeah, I probably should get Willow on here. I'm just gonna have to figure out how to do that. So while that goes, I'm going to, let me open a Windows terminal because we're gonna to have to do stuff with it if I really am gonna put Willow on the system. Uh, bash. And hopefully that cooperates. Okay, cool. That actually does cooperate. Uh, so, while that is going... I'm just getting ready to do the next step while this copies, so don't mind me. All right, so I've got K part X in subsystem for Linux all set up. So as soon as we're done installing here, we will be able to copy over the Willow applications. And uh, ZLS, thank you for the $5 Canadian super chat. Um, Neozeed, I did an entire video on that, including exploring that very strange C compiler. That's interesting how documents for words for Word for DAWs and Word for OS2 are different. Uh, yeah, we can install conversions. Actually, I probably should install the sample, but uh, we can add it, create a new group. Okay. All right, so that has been successfully installed. So 
So here we go. Microsoft Word for OS 2. Cannot start. Oh, maybe apparently we have to reboot. Um, okay, if we gotta do that, let me just do a full shutdown. Let me switch the view so you can see my desktop. Then let me... Uh, yeah, let's... Let me... Give me a moment to do a little bit of work here. Mount... Let me drag this over because I had I had to think about that command. Uh, so I should have a copy of Willow's applications here. Yeah, I do. Uh, so CP Willow mount OS two like that like that and then start that back up all right cool The, um, we, there are ways to use Willow for arbitrary compiled applications. Yeah, like, um, d uh, I think it was Dr. Shop it. Um, someone got my flat, my progress pride flag generator running under Willow. Uh, you know what? I don't even have the binary on hand or I would have run it. Oh, well. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, that, the photo, I, that is a photo I took myself. Um, that was, um, actually the photo that I use for, um, the, that isn't my desktop wallpaper, but I took that photo. Uh, I, that is from the waterfront, uh, that is looking at New York City at dawn. I should actually, like, sell prints. You know, let me, let me ask... Would you be interested in, like, I don't want to go crazy on monetization, but I really do need to increase my revenue stream if I'm going to go full time. Like, I almost wonder if I should sell a print with some of my photos. Like, how hard could it actually be? I would say Willow worked better because it was based off the actual Windows code. Apparently, a lot of you actually would like to see some of that. Um, okay, I'm just seeing here. Like, I don't think any copies of Mirrors has actually shown up. So, a lot of people are apparently, like, a good number of you, 80%, would actually be interested. I'd have to figure out what I want to sell. That's a... February thing to figure out like I would definitely get do the at shirt I would definitely do the at shirt I don't know if I could trade more oh right uh that is an interesting boot failure message Den gen digital I I don't see what grounds they could complain about, but I could always use I could always use Restless Yankee. Like N Commander is not a reference to Norn Commander. I didn't even think about it at the time. I'm not even sure I remembered Norn Commander when I picked up the handle. Like, I would probably sell some of the prints of my photos, and I might do the at sign. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so now we have Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word for OS2. Okay. And Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, this is this is not a great representation of a presentation manager app. If you saw my video, activate window. Apparently, I only have four megabytes of disk space free. Like, do I really only have four megabytes of disk space free? I mean... It's not horrible, but it is l like this isn't amazing. So Word for OS two works. Let's load up the Willow applications. Okay, Microsoft, okay, so setup, There we go. So this is basically a port of Windows to run under OS 2. We're now on 1.2. Uh, extended edition 1.2. Because like... There isn't a lot of apps to run here, but now, like, now I've got a lot of questions that I'm going to need to a get answered. Like, we've been testing with Extended Edition, but maybe Standard Edition is faster? It's possible? I'm not CERN. Then again, this is... Microsoft started using compression in this era, so maybe a lot of the pain is... The compression pain. These were released as a demo by Microsoft. I don't remember where they published it. Uh, if Dr. Shuppet is still online, uh, they can weigh in. But I believe that these may have been on ftp.microsoft.com at one point. They were pretty widely distributed, though. So, like, just by adding these apps, you get quite a lot of... There, there's no there's no music support in this version. In fact, even Windows didn't have music support. The first version with music support was 3.0 with multimedia extensions, and then 3.1 was the first retail version with actual music support. Yeah, I mean, we would need literally multimedia for OS 2 support, and... That will be painful to get, to say the least. Like, maybe part of the pain point here is just how long it takes to decompress. Maybe that's why the transferring file stage is so slow. They, uh, they compressed Willow. As you'll see. Um, there may have been third-party programs to do it under Windows 3.0, but I'm not certain 
that was or was not the case. But I mean, once you set up the Willow applications, you'll notice how much more usable OS2 suddenly becomes. Okay, so installation complete. I don't remember if they create a program group or not. Do they? Yeah, I don't think they do. So we just go to file manager. Okay. Applets. Got, we're down to one megabyte of disk space is free. So here we have is calculator. Um, sometime today? Oh. Oh, I think it locked up. Uh, no, no, it's still going. There might not be enough memory to... Oh, did, I guess I ran the wrong one. So if I run calculator, I get the hourglass... Max partition size is larger. I could put a bigger drive on it. Did I unmount? Like, did I properly unmount? Yeah, I did unmount it. So. Yeah, it's just. I think it's trying to page out and is failing. I mean, we literally have one megabyte of hard drive space free. Yeah, I think it's crashed. It's not even, it's not even hitting the disk at this point. Uh, yeah, I think that's locked up. It is possible I need to reboot, but I have that distinct feeling I just don't have enough disk space. I think it's trying to page out and it can't. Uh, let's give it the free finger salute. Let's try that. This is incredibly unimpressive. Let me see here. I do think I have a copy. Let me see if I have it in my projects folder. I do think I have free one on hand. It should be on the NAS if I do, because I used free one for Word for Windows. So I should have that on hand. Uh, I have Microsoft 131, so I guess we're going to look at that. I don't think I have the, I, I don't have the IBM one on hand. I mean, but you really, you, the thing is that you would just buy a new computer at this point. It's because I installed extended edition and apparently it's a little bit too much to ask. Yeah, I feel like, I think I've asked a little bit too much from this. That would have been a beefy system for this era. Okay, that's memory test complete.
Well, we know it's been a successful stream when the bots show up. Let's see here. How many hours have we been going? We, we are now past the four hour mark. What was the last time frame we talked about? So. Okay. So let's. Let's act before we let's so let's open an OS2 window. So if we just run calc, what happens? Um It locks up apparently. No, I'm actually serious. It's uh Yeah, no, it completely locked up. Right, um, I guess we're going to install OS2 1.3 because this is shot. This is completely shot. That is pathetic. Like, it doesn't even warn you, it just stops. Alright, so if that is in fact the case, then let us just try Standard Edition and let's just wipe the drive. Like, at this point, we got nothing to lose. Well, I'll put the Willow files back on when I put 1.3 back on, because I want to see if 1.3 has any, like, is at all better. Like, I'm not afraid to format and retry this. While this is mem testing, I am going to go use the facility. So I'll be AFK. Um, I'll be back in a moment. And I'm back. It's still not done posting, incidentally. Okay. Um you can do you can do 16 memory 16 megabytes on a 286, but if you have to have any compatibility with DAWs then you cannot use the first megabyte of address space or actual memory. So, okay, all right. So Microsoft operating system to, this is 1991. This was the last Microsoft release because 1.2 was either late 89 or early 90. I don't remember offhand. So this will be the last 16. 
SCP, which one is 645? Hold on. I, if, if people are going to make skip references in my chat, I want to know which one I'm being compared, which one's being brought up. Uh... I'm going to have to read that, that article, so... Most most operating systems leave that first megabyte untouched. So it's interesting how it just says Microsoft Operating System 2 install, but there's no logo. It's like something is incomplete here. Like this feels a little half-baked. I believe this is the version that came with Land Manager. Uh, let me, let's just look here. Uh, make choices. Okay. Uh, we'll just do fat. That's fine. Continue with installation. Disk one. Definitely, definitely a less than. Like, we don't care about Rex and PostScript's font support, though, at least for right now. Yeah, like, it, you can drop an uh, 386SX or a 386 in general on most 286 motherboards. It's not going to be super fast, but it will work. And you still get virtual 8088 mode, which is a major win. Uh, I gotta fix the hair tie. All right, so let, let us format. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna format because this install is foobard, so there's nothing of value to keep here. Uh. I'm actually going to go HPFS because I've always found that using fat with OS2 is a bad idea. Yeah, yeah like I said, I really need to work and convert my IBM PS2 stuff, uh, convert my PS2 my 30 pin sim so they'll work on the ps2 we're in, we're reinstalling 1.3 because i've managed to foobar the install um yeah we've we've already broken an install so this is going well the thing is i'm not convinced until i test this on real hardware i am not convinced that this is a representative test and the reason for this is that OS2 uses parts of the 286 that most operating systems do not. So until I compare, say, Xenix to OS2 side by side on the same hardware, it's hard to say if it is or is not slower. Yeah. Well, we have four megabytes of RAM, NeoZed. HPFS should be fine. And we can always add more memory. We can literally download more memory. Although I'm now not sure I'm going to be able to mount the resulting thing. Let me check and make sure I have... Okay, so Microsoft's uh, WSL kernel does not support um, does not support HPFS, so I'm not going to be able to easily install the Willow uh, stuff. I didn't add a bigger hard drive, but you know what? I probably should. You know, what? let's let's actually do that. Like I've already formatted this one, but. Uh, 
how do I want to do this? Yeah, I do want you know I do want to get footage of the Willow stuff running. So yeah, I guess we're gonna add a bigger hard drive. Uh, we'll go with we'll go with a uh, hundred megabytes. Actually, no, I can't because this is a 286. I have to follow the the fat formatting. So actually, what I have to do is a little bit different and quite a bit more annoying. We actually have to boot off an MS DAW a CD, and we have to format from there. Not nah, CD. Um, as annoying. I was going to install 1.3, but I have to reboot. I just wish I could skip this stupid memory test. OS2 can use multiple hard drives. It wasn't ISO. It was... I brain farted. You know what? For installation, I, I don't like doing this, but for installation alone, I am going to turn up the speed. I'm gonna, we're actually going to go be a 25 megahertz 286. I'll turn it back down when all is said and done. That doesn't feel faster. I guess it is. Yeah, that is faster. It's not a lot faster, but it is faster. The Model 30 will do 4 megabytes of RAM with just the built-in SIMs, and with the multi-function adapter, you can take it much farther. Yeah, that's, that is not faster. That isn't faster at all. Um, Fritz, it's going to be sooner rather than later, because this is really getting on my nerves. Like, this is actually starting to irritate me. Uh, 25 is the limit. Or I would run it at 100 megahertz. I am really... That is what, that is what IBM sold at the time. Um, you could get 12.5 megabytes of RAM on a Model 30 with the multi-faction uh, card. Like, my Model PS2 motherboard can take up to 4 megabytes of RAM, and that's what I intend to put on it. Okay, let's let that format. Yeah, I maybe I will actually do that today if I can work. The problem is that I have a really junky soldering iron and I keep meaning to buy a less junky soldering iron. But that that's going to require like work and effort, so I'm not quite ready to do that yet. I've seen uh, Windows NT DAWs on the RISC versions of Windows NT. So, there is that. Okay. Why, why should I get a pun? Uh, I'm assuming you meant pencil. I don't know. I just need something to fiddle with my hands today, like... I slept okay tonight, but I just, this entire month has just seen me exhausted. Like, I am legitimately, I think we're going to install this and I'm going to call the stream. Um, okay, so that is formatted successfully. Stream stuff. One, we need stream stuff. Two, 
right, so now that we've got that taken care of, Oh, I didn't know that. I honestly, I probably could justify uh, uh, Harka. Like, I have a desoldering gun that I've used all of one time. Um, but the one time I used it, it was incredibly useful for removing a Dallas chip without damaging traces. So I don't regret doing that. I don't have a fidget spinner. Like, I never got into one of those. But there are days where I just need to fiddle of my hands. So, there is that. Like, my biggest reason I want to, is, speaking of things I want to do, like, I do want to get the RS-6000 running Windows NT. At some point, I would love to put support for Qum or r figure an emulator out or something. It was like, yeah. I pace. I, I've always been a huge pacer. Um, and I am an ex-cigarette smoker. Like, I used to be a pack-a-day smoker. Um, I deleted the stream off YouTube. I had one saved VOD on my channel which was a dwarf fortress i don't think i smoked in that stream but if you ever used to watch me on i may not have smoked on mixer actually i may have not done it on camera but i used to smoke all the time on corporate meetings like i was known for it like like it was every once in a while i would forget to mute and they could hear me take a drag so, yeah, I, I used to be a huge smoker. I did quit in... I quit tobacco, I should say. But I don't... Um, but, yeah. Whew. But, I don't know, like I said, I just feel incredibly on edge today, and I don't understand it, like, maybe it's just this entire month, like, I've had to go through, I had to sort out all my finances, I, basically, what I want to do going forward, and, Chad, I'd love to hear your feedback on this, I want to revive my original, so before my health got really bad, I used to do consulting, I actually made decent money at it. Like, it wasn't amazing, but it was decent. Um, and one of the big things that I've been doing is I am reestablishing my consulting business. Because the way I ran the consulting business is I was a sole proprietorship. I ran it in my own name. And I just handled my own finances, um, so forth and so on. So, when when I decided to form Restless Systems LLC, which is basically going to be the business entity for... It's fine... Let me just do all the setup here and then I'll talk. Yeah. So when I did Restless Systems LLC, I made it legally distinct from both myself and my old consulting work. But I ran into problems because there was an issue of the way the paperwork was filed at the state of New Jersey. I have gotten that all sorted out. It was just a giant pain. Um, but now I have to go back and do it all again. Because I also need my consulting business to be separate from my personal finance. And I may even incorporate my consulting business. I, ha I don't think I'm going to go that far, but I might do it in the future. Because if someone wants me to... Someone hands me a bunch of vintage source code and says, Hey, can you please restore that? 
I may do that as a YouTube thing, or I may do that as a private consulting thing. And that's why I have to separate out my books because it does matter. Because some of that I might actually have a third party handle. Like, um, if someone wanted me to work on, like, I, I don't know, NT for MIPS, I could do a lot of the work, but I need to have someone with the hardware to actually test it because I don't have MIPS hardware. Um. I filed my compliance with the state. Uh, which which document are you talking about, NJ Road fan? Because I want to make sure I didn't get that wrong. Um, my LLC and I both exist here in New Jersey. Um, the LLC brought in no money in financial year. It, it existed in November because of the problem with the banking. I it was effectively inactive until January first. Yeah, no, I should have, I should have filed my annual report. Let me make sure of that NJ annual report, uh, state of New Jersey annual report. We'll file an annual report. Okay, I'm probably going to have to do that afterwards. I'm going to have to actually check this. I should be okay, though. Because uh, I'm going to have to look at my entry number and shit. So. Shit, I might be late on that. Uh, that is a g Thank you, NJ Roadfan. NJ check annual report. LLC. I will do. Hopefully, you know what? I can look up my entry number. I can do that while this is copying files. Uh, NJ Department of Business. Let me see if I. Hopefully, I am not. Hopefully, that is not actually going to be a problem. That is a good thing to look at. NJ Business Lookup. Yeah, I can do the entry look. The entry number. I have it. Uh, that's public information, though. Restless Systems LLC. Yeah, there's my there there it is in the New Jersey State database. Business type is a New Jersey limited liability. No annual reports are due for Restless Systems LLC. Yeah, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I I incorporated it past the deadline. So I'm good until November 23. Uh, but I feel much better knowing that fact. Gotta tell you, the amount of paperwork I have done in the last month has been unreal. No, we're do we're still doing this. We're doing this in emulator. Um, the PS2 is still out of service. So yes, I have in fact done my tax paperwork correctly. <laughs> at, at, at this point, I'm expecting the IRS to burst, burst through my wall, Kool-Aid man style. Yeah, maybe I'll put the flag of Alaska directly behind me on the stream. Like, I actually really like that. Or maybe I'll put New Jersey behind me. You know what, I'm gonna, let's, let me ask the audience. New Jersey, New York, uh, not hard drive issues, I just need to put more memory in it, like literally I just have to put more memory in it, like the hard drive has problems, but the hard drive is good enough for what we're doing. Okay, so New Jersey, New Jersey was first out of the gap, uh, gap. I could put the world map behind me. No, I'm not going to do a pirate flag. New Jersey is still winning with 33% of the vote. Oh, Alaska. Alaska is taking over. <laughs> I, 
a asking the chat. I, I like that New York is at 7%. It's like my home state is like... I could put in I could put the at sign logo there. I really could. Um Alaska so New York is where I was born. New Jersey is where I live. And Alaska is where I lived and left my heart in. Yeah, no, Bob Ross basically uh Bob Ross basically just painted Alaska. Okay. No, I don't want to put the state of the the most corporate friendly state flag there I know you know the thing is that I how do I put this for my living room in particular I just, I, I really just want to be, I'm trying to figure out how I want to phrase this. I don't think I want, I like, I don't know what flags I want to put up. Like, I really feel like what I want for this room is a state flag, like, other flags, I, I've got the bedroom. I've got the other room. It's what's going to be always visible on camera 24-7. Um, That's why I'm... Like... I don't regret doing it, but the amount of hate I get whenever I do a fundraiser... It's like, I don't want to deal with that on every stream. That's kind of why I don't want to put... Um, one of the uh pride flags up but i might do it i haven't decided uh the drink today is peach iced tea yeah maybe i'll rotate the flags on a regular basis that may be what i end up doing like when if, if when we do another fundraiser, I would be happy to put the pride flag out, but I don't want to be. I don't think I want it there twenty four seven. There is no Unix flag that I'm aware of. But yeah, maybe I will just rotate the. Uh, I would rotate the flags on a regular basis. I think I'll put the. I think I'll put the new. Uh, maybe I'll put the New York one up because New York is where I started. Also, I'm losing stream bit rate, so the stream might be choppy. Still trying to install. I am, yeah, I'm probably, I mean, I could put up a Debian flag. I was a Debian developer. That would be representative of me, actually. But I think right now I, I want the state flags because those are places that have relevance for me. I've got, I've got four large walls to put shit on, so I got time to figure this out. Okay, installation A, and then we reboot, and then, yeah, I think after we install this, I am calling it. We'll install Willow, the Willow applications, and then, yeah, we're going to call it because I am, I am legitimately kind of dead. You know, I'm having this thought that I, 
I mean, the line I've kind of drawn for the channel, I think, I, I think I'm, I'll, I'll elaborate on this because I, I, I feel like the way I said what I just said is open to misinterpretation. By and large, the work that I'm doing on this stream is just the work itself. And I'm essentially irrelevant to that work. It's the work itself, not the offer that matters. There are people that would dis disregard my work out of hand if I put... Um, th there's a reason I, have, I don't monetize my charity stuff. There is a difference between the artist, what they stand for, and the actual work. And I don't want to be discounted for that alone. Like, people will do it regardless, but I don't have to make it easy for them. Because, ultimately speaking, if my work is accepted, whether it's loud and blatant or not, it is still accepted, and everything I am stand for is accepted along with it. But I don't need to be in your face about it constantly. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that listen to me just for chillax. You know, just to relax and recover. But like when I when I sit and think about it, it's like that is not like equal rights, pride, you know, human rights, these are all things I have fundraised for. They're all things I care deeply about, but they cannot be my life 24-7. And it's kind of why I don't... Like, that is why a lot of people burn out. Because I, I worked in human rights organizations before. You know, it... And uh, myself, I went with that. Like, you try and sustain that 24-7 and you can't. And it's why I draw a pretty strict line in my life of where I do and don't do work. My living room is my workplace. My bedroom is where I relax. It's why I don't film in my bedroom for the most part. Like, you can find pictures of it. I have posted photos of my bedroom. I have sh the shelves in there with all my vintage computers are in there, are in my bedroom. Uh, and then just some small life effects stuff. Okay. Um, uh, Chipsy, what, what, what didn't you know? Just so I know I can elaborate. So now we're doing printer installation. We don't have support driver. Yeah, I would say the Microsoft one does feel a lot faster. Like, th this has been relatively quick. Yeah, like, I didn't actually note the timestamp down, but we've only... But yeah, we've only been installing for about 30 minutes, including the format. Um, for context, uh, Chip, uh, Chip Z, I have done fundraisers on air at this point. I've done uh, Planned Parenthood, NNAF, which is National Network of um, funds i'm not saying the a word because that will in fact get my chat it, it, it trips the it, it trips the community guidelines thing and i will get limited ads and i have fundraised for trevor project um last december yeah no i i legitimately do like i we raised uh, crabs what was the actual dollar amount it's in content but I know we raised over 10,000. I think it was over 13,000 USD in total in 2022. About a 50-50 split between um, reproductive rights and Trevor Project. Because we raised 5.6 grand for Trevor Project over December. Yeah, it's... I just don't want it to be there 24-7. That's really what it boils down to. Because... I don't want people watching me just because, yes, I do this. I want people watching me because I am doing OS2, but I'm also going to have periods where I'm going to fundraise. So that's kind of the line I drew for myself. And I've also noticed that we have lost 
in the last 15 minutes, a lot of people have tuned off the stream because I got political. But, uh, it was actually a bit more than that because there was um, ad revenue that I donated. I left monetization on by act. No, I left monetization. It wasn't by accident. And then I reconsidered it, turned off the monetization, and then I donated that directly. You can't hit escape on that RAM test. You just kind of live with it. Oh, yeah. No, you know why it's faster? It was because we're on 25 megahertz. Let's, uh, let's slow it down to what it actually should be. And yes, that is going to be a hard reboot. Now we're back to 10 megabytes. Uh, 10 megahertz. That being said, it's almost 5 p.m., so... Yeah, I mean, BIOS in this time period was really primitive. So... There's that. Yeah, no, the reason why I think it was faster is because uh, the machine was faster. We uh, we turned the speed up. I will add that to the notes. Um, yeah, CDFS loaded. Um... SCSI existed in this era. I have a SCSI card in my 286. Oh, this is so slow. This is so slow. Oh, this is excruciating. This is this is literally just watching the processor count over and over and over again. There's got to be a 286 BIOS out there that we can patch. Uh, we, we, we will try that on real harder. Cause like I said, I've got the SCSI card in there. Like the IBM, the PS2 should run OS2 1.3 quite nicely. And that probably will be the permanent machine on that. I, I really wish, uh, I know I've seen you on several streams. I believe the, I'll type in chat. Yeah. Unfortunately, that looks like traditional Chinese to me, but I admittedly don't know much about Chinese or anything about Asian languages, aside from the fact that they generally look like that. I at least have a 16-bit adapt tech. I really wish I could visit China again. I don't think, just due to the pandemic precautions i don't think that'll happen anytime soon but i really would love to see the mainland again i've been i've been to taiwan once i've been to the mainland twice uh and i spent way too much time in hong kong like i would be happy if i never had to see hong kong again this actually does feel quite a bit faster like this legitimately does feel faster Like, look, look how much performant that is compared to the other ones. Yeah, I mean, legitimately, that is a distinct upgrade. I don't know what Microsoft changed. Uh, I probably didn't install the tutorial program, but... Or I didn't have one, because this is the Microsoft version. But, I mean, that is a world of difference compared. So... And it's only using 10 megabytes of space. I'm not convinced that CSET was a better compiler, but let's install Willow because that's kind of the last thing we were going to do. So let me switch this back over to desktop view. All right, let's close the VM. Let's stop the VM. 
exit, load. So that, that all looks good. And yeah, look, there is actually AHA support driver right there. Um, I probably should find one of the NCR cards because those will probably work better. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, OS2 1.2. Probably need to rename that VM because that is definitely uh, not what that is, but whatever. Okay, there we go. Yeah, like I said, OS2's drivers are hard. Well, Krabs, if you have advi need advice about traveling, feel free to ask. And if you do end up coming to the state, you know, I mean, in a lot of times the limit, you know, I know people who don't use their real name, the names on their documents for themselves. And I'm not talking like in an LGBT sense in the New York underground hacker scene, because I've been active in that space for a long time. Most people know other people by their handles. Like there's people like. My, people, you, most people in this chat know my legal name, but I've gone by N Commander in a lot of places in real space that when I'm doing this, N Commander or just N is my name. When I'm doing other stuff in my life, I'll use a different name, you know, my actual legal name. But it's sort of like this, it's aspects of yourself, I guess. Yeah, but the question is, why was Presentation Manager so hungry to begin with, considering that Windows 2.x, which is what Presentation Manager was based off of, isn't? Like, what the hell? Like, what went so wrong? I mean, I, I think the thing that has been the most fascinating about this YouTube journey isn't just the YouTube stuff. It's the people that I've met in Discord. It's the people that I've talked to before Twitter went to shit. It's the people that I've talked to on Fetty. It's the people that have reached out and just offer, like, my next station was a donation and next stations are probably second to only, or next hardware is probably only second to Amiga in terms of collectability. And while I had to do some work on it, I mean, that is still significant. So, yep, there's that. Yeah, I mean, that was the advice I got as well, but I used this handle. I used N Commander with my real life identity when I worked at Canonical. Like, I was, you know, that was my actual name, but I was N Commander on the internal chat. Um, and I just kind of started doing it one day and I just stopped caring. Because here's the thing, when you are known, when you're known by an identity that's tied to your real name, or in my case, because I've got the face cam on it, it mean, it gives it a certain authenticity to what you're saying. You're not just some nameless internet troll, you are an actual person. Like, if someone wanted to go and debate me on a major point, it's really easy for me to disregard a YouTube comment, which is just noise. Because they won't even sign it with their real names. Like, okay, lol. Alright, so let's see if this... Like, this feels so much faster. Like, I didn't think it would be that much a notable difference. Alright, so let's try this again.
Alright, let's see here. Uh, we're probably near the end of this stream, but... Yeah. Uh, I have an A4000, and mine's a full video toaster. Well, see, see my, my Amiga experience is I have a full video toaster. No, I'm just talking in general. I'm just talking in general, uh, general sense. I, I, we were just talking about the use of real names on the internet. Like, I've used my real name on the internet for over a decade at this point. Literally. Um... I, I think what it boils down to is it helps me be real. Like, yeah, I, I have an, um, I paid a small fortune for it, but I had an opportunity to buy a video toaster last year. I now have it working as an Amiga, but that's all it does. I, I still don't have the video toaster part working. Um... I should do something with that system. I don't know what. Even if it's just playing a game, I should actually do something. I don't say... You know, it's not so much using your real name. Uh, no, we are... We are legitimately... Hold on, let me confirm that we're not 25. Yeah, no, we're speed 10. So, yeah, it is faster. You know, it's not so much the actual real legal name so f so much. It's a name that uniquely identifies you as you and can be tied to an actual person. Like, if you said, and Commander said that, it's no different than saying that... I, it's no different than using my legal name because you know who N Commander is. It's the people that basically shitpost and then disappear. That is the difference I'm trying to make here. But I'm being pretty philosophical about this. Like, there's a lot of different viewpoints on this. Um, and for a lot of people, they only ever have one name, and they never want to change that name. Or they only change it once if they are trans. I mean, th th it's a discussion I've ha heard in multiple contexts, so... Just me being philosophical on a Sunday night. Yeah, the crabs, that's kind of how I've come to feel about it. Like, as long as it's you, it doesn't actually matter. Because there are going to be people that are going to make mistakes. And then there are people that are going to do it to try and... So I open the calculator and then it still doesn't actually open. Oh no, there it goes. There it goes. Look, it's the Windows calculator. Yeah, I mean Microsoft Windows calculator. 52 times 96. Cool. Does it have an does it have its icon? The mouse is a little bit Loady, but it is better. I do think that's an emulation thing, so that's the calculator. Uh, so win help. Yeah, so this was essentially a full port of Windows to run under OS2. Check that out. Windows help. That is cool watching it draw in. So I should be able to open any of these help files. And that's the standard file dialog box from Windows. Yeah, that looks about right. It's even fast. You know what? If I wrote a benchmark application under Windows 3.0 or 3.1, we could run it through Willow and then we could determine it. That is neat. All right, so terminal we shouldn't, we probably won't be able to do anything interesting with. 
Like, we don't have any serial ports, but we might as well open that. Yep. So, I mean, imagine if OS, like, if OS2 had shipped with these applications, it would have been much more usable than it actually was. Developed for Microsoft by Futuresoft uh, Engineering. So these were released in 1990. Okay. So what else do we still, what else we got on the pile here? Uh, we've got right. Okay. I've, uh, there are some, there, there is Odin, so, but hold on. This is Word for Windows running on OS2 1X via Willow. It's really just a cut down version of Word. Okay. I mean, it, it was not noticeably lagging from when I was typing. So that is a good sign. All right. So what other ones can we play with? Uh, card file. Uh, you know, we'll just load up card file for the sake of loading it up. Oh, right is still running. So I guess I have to close that. Oh, it, it is still somewhat laggy but it's not as bad as you'd think uh card file they probably yeah that's kind of how i take it so this is a card file like i don't know what else to say here it's a card file Uh, paintbrush. It's probably gonna look really horrible. Actually, you know, we're in. It was meant to run on sixteen colors, so it's probably gonna be fine. Oh, that's a little lag. That is a lot laggy. That is a lot laggy. Like, you can see it trying to redraw. So if I double click this, yeah, we can see all the different, uh, you know, that's not bad. It's, again, the mount sensitivity is a bit off because the host, the VM has got problems here, but uh, I'm not that worried about it. Uh, oh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, definitely some latency issues, but it does work. So what else we got to play with? Uh, reverse C. So, people told me to go for the corners, so I will go for the corners. Okay. So, we place there, we place there. Oh, and the AI got that corner, unfortunately. So I have to avoid the AI from getting the next corner. Okay, so now we flip this one. And then the AI flips that. We have that corner. Let me flip that piece there. Oh, and the AI grabs that there. I'm not good at this game. Like, I'm trying to grab the corners and I'm not doing a very good job of it. Although maybe I'm doing it better than I think I am? Probably not. 
Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I lost this. Now I know I lost this. Uh, let's play it out. I lost by 40. Wow, I, I actually lost by more than last time. Okay. Uh, someday I'll win that game. Uh, let's load clock. Wait for the clock to load. And then I'm probably going to have to open another window, but we'll let clock run. Yeah, like, this is considerably faster than it was. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Like, reverse, like, reverse, I never played back in the day because it was never on any computer. Everything had 3-1, not 3. Um... We looked at right, we looked at win help, so I guess really all there is is to do solitaire. I kind of want to take a screenshot of this, because th this feels like perfectly normal. Let me, let me rearrange these windows slightly. Like, how small can I make that clock? I can make that clock really tiny. So we do something like this. I guess I guess we're going to just play it out. Um, let me grab a screenshot of this. Take a screenshot. And then I'll put this on the wiki later. I guess we're going to play this out because I'm kind of... I'm curious on how well this will play, so I guess we'll do it. Uh, yes, it's that time of the stream where I'm going to play Solitaire again. Like, you can definitely see it tearing, but it's not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Oh, Ace. Two. Uh, I really want to pull that four off if I can. Which may, probably will not happen. Uh, I can move that there. That doesn't actually help me all that much. That also doesn't help me. Uh, that'll take... Oh, ace. Two. Three. Eight doesn't help me. I will grab that three. I mean, we could, uh, yeah, I think we're at the end of the stream here. Like, after I, I'm going to get a victory, and then I'll probably call it for the night. Because I, I got to tell you, I am feeling it today. Uh, well, I'm seeing a distinct lack of valid moves. Uh, we probably could install Willow on Presentation Manager. Wait, no, I have valid moves. I can do that. What am I saying? Seven. Five. Uh, yeah, we can work with that. Nine. Uh, yeah, we can work with that. A Joker. What does that do for me? Uh, you know what? I can work with this, actually. Let me... Let's grab all these cards. I can't do anything with that queen, but we can shuffle the deck again. Seven. That king is actually useful. We grab that like that. Uh... I got no place to play that four. No place I can place that ten. That... Queen, I'll at least grab it, even if I can't use it. Oh, yay, the ace. That is actually useful. Uh, so what move can I make next? Like, I don't have a lot of great moves here. That nine doesn't help me. That two does help me. Three. 
three. Uh, we can play that four. Which doesn't immediately seem to do anything for me. Yeah, I'm not seeing... Oh, you know what? I can grab that jack and move the ten, and we can flip this card up. Oh, that really doesn't help me. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab this three. I'm going to move the two so I can flip up this card. That was probably a smart move, but that really doesn't help me in the slightest. I will grab that nine. Actually, no, undo, undo. Move that nine. Okay, there we go, that is actually useful. King, king, if I can get a queen of the right color, I can use it. Uh, shit, I could have actually done something with that before. Crap. Uh, that might actually be it. Oh, wait, hold on. I can play that four. That lets me move... That gives me that five. That doesn't help. Uh, you know what? I can move that there. And we flip up. A 10. Does that help? Yeah, actually, that does help. I can flip that up. It gives me that 9. That 4 does not... Uh, you know what? I can grab that 4, put it there. Grab that queen. And then we move the jack. Uh, 8, 7... Queen. Uh, okay. Ooh, that may be it, chat. Let's see here. What can I do with that? Not a lot. For the chat, I'm not looking at chat because the latency is so high that it's difficult. Can I move that five somewhere? If I had a six, I could do it. But I don't have a six that I can reach. I'm not seeing any moves here that help me. Four, move the four of spades to the five of hearts. Four of spades to the five of hearts. Move the five of diamonds up. Five of diamonds. I don't see, I'm not, why am I not? Four of spades to five of hearts. Oh, I see. You're right. Uh, yeah, I can work with that. Thanks, chat. At least I didn't restart it, because that would have probably gone chat upset with me. Uh, grab the 7. Grab the 10. The 9. And then the ace goes up. And then I can grab, I can start playing. I think that's it. I think we actually have it. 5. Uh, what am I not seeing? Uh, I've got... Oh, I'm missing... Okay, we have to move some of these around. I just gotta work out what needs to be moved. So this can go onto this pile and flip that up. That goes there. Uh, I can play that six. There we go. Chat, was that the first deal? I think that's the first time we've ever successfully been the first deal of a, a game. Still have to click on them all, though, which kind of sucks. Uh, 
and there we go. Oh, that was that was a little rough. Okay, so we're coming up on the five hour. Let's see, our five hour mark. So I'm gonna say at four hours fifty. I guess I guess we're gonna be watching the animation go through. It's better than the other thing that we watched. What were we even watching that animation on? Like that really slow one. Like what were we playing that on? Like that was dreadful. Like this isn't so bad. Because that wasn't on OS2. I don't even remember what we were playing on. Like, the other night we were playing on something abominationally slow. Alright. Chad always likes watching me do this, so I'm going to stretch my legs while this runs. Um, yeah, I'm just going to turn off my camera view. I, I didn't even realize I'm not... I haven't even been in 86 box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Hold on. All right, there we go. I'll be right back. I don't think we're going to do dev to I, I don't have them on hand and I'd have to still do like we're going to play with the dev tools at some point I don't think that's going to be it today because I, I have to jump through a lot of hoops to do the dev tools and I got to track down all the SDKs and such like that is the dev tools is not a small stream Oh yeah, I gotta put my face cam back up. Uh, I am surprisingly dead on my feet. I think this was a pretty solid, pretty solid stream though. Okay. So yeah, let's let, we'll let this finish, and then I think I'm gonna call it. Um. Uh, H. Michael Craw, thank you for the $20 super sticker. The dev tools have already been, uh, the dev tools have been saved. Um, I was showing, I showed Microsoft C on a previous stream, so. Um. It's interesting how it both is and isn't faster, because this is converting... GDI to G GPI interface command. So, you know, it's not fast, but it's faster than not. So, yeah, no, that's looking pretty solid. Mo the, the Microsoft tools would have just been Microsoft C... I believe Watcom can generate 16-bit OS2 binaries, but 
I don't know if it can do 16-bit presentation manager ones. I know it can do command line. That's going free. Well, this is a 10 megahertz 286, Tom Runeberg. Okay, there we go. Um, no, the card trails are not predefined as far as I know. It just doesn't clean up. Like, it, it's... Taking advantage of the way certain graphic refresh goes. Yeah, wow, I am actually kind of fried. So I'm after this finishes, I'm gonna just um, probably wrap it up. Uh, Microsoft, sh not Microsoft. OS two should have supported the IBM graphics accelerator, the eight five seventeen, I think it was called, and some of the later ones were also supported, but it was never great support okay there we go I'm satisfied with that like chat do you have any questions Yeah, like, I'll give it another minute or two just to see if anyone has any questions. Well, the way it's done on Windows 2.0, and I've seen no indication that it's actually different with GPI, is that Microsoft basically just shipped the source to GDI and told vendors, make it go fast. I mean, a lot of the concepts of GPI, GDI were handled in graphical file system. That is something I actually do want to revisit. I will be streaming next Friday minimum, or next not next Friday, next weekend, because I don't, I'm not that determined. It. On Monday, I have a personal life errand I need to run, so it won't be there. Probably to, Tuesday is also probably fried, although maybe I will pull out the compact portable and we'll do something either Tuesday or Wednesday. Like if I have it sitting there ready to go, it's easier to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I got to move. Um, I've got to work on the PS2. Like it's sitting right here next to me. But I think on that note, if you've enjoyed the stream, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoy uh, this content, consider supporting me on Patreon, Coffee, or on GitHub sponsorships. Until next time, this is your host, N Commander, signing out and wishing you all a pleasant day. I will try and stream sometime else this week. Um, no, I'm going to do a suit. I'm going. To, oh, I, all right. I will actually answer that. My current plan is to do a summary of all the research we've done up to this point. I really need to cover Windows 2.0 and crew and Windows uh, and OS 2 2.x, and then we will be able to start making a video. Um, but the next thing I get to do is I have to write this all up, uh, which is going to suck. But before I actually, before I actually shut the stream down, I will put the timestamps in the description. And I will put the notes on the wiki. Like, I'll do that, like, I'm doing that right now. So as soon as I shut it down, it will all be there. So let me grab that. Um, let me log in to the wiki. I might do, like, I don't really want to do Linux from scratch again. Like, that was long enough as is. So, let me get, um... Does that work? No, I think I have to use the pre-tag with this. So, yeah, no, I'm just... I'm just posting my notes right now before I actually shut it down. 
And I'll look at the chat as soon as I'm done doing that. How do I get it working in a floating box? Uh, you know, that is in a floating box, so that's good enough. Alright, uh, now that all those are actually there... Alright, folks, this has been your host, End Commander. I hope you've enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Support the channel. See ya.